ಗಣಪತಿಭವಾಮಹೆ ಕವಿ ಕವೀನಾಮಸ್ತಮ ಜಯಸ್ತರಾಜಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪದಾನಸನ್ನೂತಿಧಿಸಾಧನ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀಭಾಗಣಾಧಿಪತೆ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವೃಷಭಂ ಚರ್ಷಣೀನಾಂ ವಿಶ್ವಮದಾಭ್ಯಂ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿಂದ್ವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಓಂ ತದ್ವಿಷ್ಣೋಪರಮ ಪರಂ ಸದಾ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಸೂರಯ ದಿವಿ ವಚಕ್ಷುರಾತಿ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ತ್ರೀ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಓಂ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ I'm sorry if some of you came last weekend and went back. It's a good idea in future to check the website, whether we, we are able to send mail or not. There will be, for example, Seshu Garu, he, he put a note on the, on the website that there is no class for the last weekend. So it's a good idea to check that because I don't know if all of you are on my list. Even if I send an email, some of you may not receive the email. So it's a good idea to check that website. Uh, in any case, all the workshops, all the seminars, all the conferences are over now. Now we, are, we can be back to uninterrupted learning. Except no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in case I forget to mention this, I, I forget to mention this, this Wednesday is Pornima, the full moon day. Right. So we'll be having Satyanarayan Sat- Sat- Vratam at my house on Wednesday night at 7.15. That's the, that's the plan. So in, if you are interested in coming, you are most welcome to come for the Vratam and have, have dinner there with the Prasadam. And Sanjay Ji, Pandit Sanjay Raj, he is coming, he is coming back to Boston before he leaves the U.S. All the workshops are over. He is in New Jersey right now and he will be in Boston on Tuesday and he will be there for the Vratam. So for, for those of you who haven't met them, met him when he came here earlier, it's a chance to meet him and also a chance to participate in the Vratam. and he'll be there for a week and he'll be leaving. So in case you are interested, send me an email at pvr.charter.net and I will give you the direction. And send an email so that we know how many people are coming. We live in Grafton, which is around 50 miles south of here, near the intersection of 90 and 495. I will send you directions. Now, let us, let us see some more examples. Any volunteers? I am very good to my meeting from here. Okay. <laughs> I, I may have your chart with me. Yes, yeah, you already have it. Yeah. The thing is, I reinstalled Windows a couple of times. I have to... I, have to, I may or may not have it. What is your name? Uh, Subramanian. Sreshan Subramanian, but Mani is my nickname. Mani. Sreshan. I don't think I had it in this computer. Okay. I think at that time we were living in Kerala's computer. So we try your chart. Okay, what is the date? June? 13, 1949. June 13, 1949. Yes. Uh, the time is 10.55 a.m. The place is Palayam Kottai. Palayam Kottai. What is the nearest big place? Near big place, Sirnal Railway. Okay, there is only a Palayam, no? Oh, Palayam Kottai. It's yeah. not blank. Yes. Oh, I see. Both the spellings are okay. For N and R, N or M is fine. No, this is M. Okay. This, this is exactly what you gave without a blank. I put a blank. Mm-hmm. Okay. One word, it's one word. One word, okay, okay. So this is a place. So you can save the chart. Leo Lagna, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Leo Lagna, Max Navamsa. Oh, Navamsa is different. You have Max Navamsa here. This is correct. Okay. Navamsa, yeah. No, you have. In the oh. chart that you wrote down here? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Actually, mask is different. A lot of plans are different. So, you are using a slightly different... Okay. Somebody used a slightly different iron answer. Okay. Okay. Now, what I want, what I want is... I want the class to make some predictions today. Instead of me going through the chart, I want you to try. If you go wrong, 
other people and I can help you, but somebody can volunteer and try. But first let us ask, what is, what is it that you want to know? What is, what is your focus? Um, this is okay. I'm, I'm not trading along with all the issues okay. around that. Yeah. My career, um, in terms of, I told you before, you know, I'm supposed to be doing something else that I'm doing now. Supposed to mean somebody told you? Exactly. Okay. Somebody told yeah. him that he, should, he will be a businessman? Several, several promise. Yeah. You said that. Promise and astrologer. Yeah. Some promise and astrologer told him that he would be in business, but he is not. And he is wondering if he will be in business and when. Okay. So, let us say that somebody came to you, they showed their chart to you and you have to give them readings. So what do you want me to do? I'll just do <coughs> whatever you want me to do. Do you want to see Navamsa or do you want to see Dasamsa? Okay, Dasamsa, Dasamsa. okay. So ask me whatever you want, I'll, I'll put that view. Now you tell me. You want to see any Dasa? First you want to see Amsa ruler? Yeah. Is that what you're going to ask? Okay, good. Very good. So let me show you the Dasamsa ruler. Now, do you want to assume that the Dasamsa Dagma is right or do you want to see how close it is to the border? 2 minutes 55 seconds earlier, the Lagna will change. From Libra, it will go back to Virgo. If the time was 2 minutes 55 seconds earlier. Similarly, if the time is 9 minutes 10 seconds later, it will go from Libra to Scorpio. So, Scorpio, how, how, how accurate is the time he is asking? <coughs> Um, this was uh, like I was, you know, I was in a village there, and, but they noted the time, 10 to 3 a.m. I was born in a house. So it's not somebody remembering it and later recollecting, oh, he was born a little after we all had dinner, so it must be 11. It's not like that. No, it's not like that. It looks like somebody <coughs> noted it when I was born. It looks like it. Okay. So that means that's oh, yeah. plus minus 5 minutes. Perhaps, perhaps. Plus minus 5 minutes. So, Scorpio is not very likely. But Libra and Virgo are both possible. Okay? Okay, now. Now, if you give them some information about your career so far, mm. it can help them okay. uh, be confident about the Dasamsa Lagna. Okay. So, tell them some feedback. Um, I worked in India for 13 years. I worked in a cement company, associated cement company. What were you doing? I was the main, I started as a mechanical engineer. I worked in the workshop. I was doing cost estimating. And a project cost estimating, and I also was <coughs> uh, dealing with a lot of steel, and, you know, cement and steel. Steel issues for the factory. I was managing the uh, mechanical steel. Material. Okay, uh, let, me, let me repeat that for those who are listening to the audio in case yeah. it didn't capture you. So he was, Siram asked him whether, uh, what kind of work he did. And then his answer was he worked at a steel company, uh, steel and cement, uh, cement, cement manufacturing, manufacturing company. company. He was dealing with materials, cost estimates, etc. He was a mechanical engineer. He was dealing with cement, steel, etc., and their cost estimations, etc., project, project cost estimations. So, okay. Now, Sriram, you want to volunteer? You want to try? And when, when did you have this career? This career, I started, uh, I came to this country in 85, 1985, <coughs> and... Uh, 13 years before. 13 years before. 13 years in India. Yeah. I associated cement company. 72 hours. 71 August onwards, yeah. For how long? 13 years. 71, okay. no, actually 15 years. 71 to 85. So, from 1971 to 1985, he was doing this, this job. If, if you want to exactly, it was August 2nd, 1971. That's when I joined. Okay, okay. August. August 2nd. August 2nd, 1971. That's when he joined in this particular job, and he was in this job since then. Okay. Yeah, February, February, February 21st, 1995. Then you came to US? Yeah, US. Okay. Feb, Feb 25. February 21. 21, 1995. Yes. Came to US August 2nd, 1975, 71. I got that. Before that I had small jobs, but that was the main job I was going to Okay, okay. We can look at them, but let us focus on the big thing. Yeah. 85. 85. I got a job as a train operator with the signal 
the environmental system, signal rescue in Andover. Then I, then I worked as a, this is, and there was no job description for GSM track, you know, I was doing like a sales job. And I was, then I went to Shark Airfish, another trucking company, doing hard job there. So and in 85, how long did you work there? So, oh, 1980, I was only there for three months. Okay. July to September, and then I quit. Because it was very hard there, it was more. Yeah, they could help and all that. So I quit by myself. I thought I made a mistake at that time, stupid mistake. And I was getting good money, but I quit and then I, I went to the trucking Jason truck. I was there for a meal. Yeah, again. Actually, yeah, 80. Yeah, 85. I was working there from September to June. Okay, that is, I think that is enough. That is. Let us know, we brought the, whatever information we have, let us try to make sense now. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the important thing is to answer Parani's question. Parani's question was, if, if we did a particular job for a couple of months, and another job for a couple of months, should we not be looking at those? If you want, you can look at those. But the thing is, if he, if he did something, a particular job, just for a few months, it may not really show up in his chart as something that he is just trying to do. It, it may be a side influence, basically. There will be tens of influences. It, it is one of the small influences. And when the time came for that influence, then that particular influence took place. For example, if you look at his annual chart of that year, there may be a strong influence in the annual chart showing that during that year a particular career will be, will be prominent for him. But if you look at the whole life, a particular small job that he did for a couple of months, it's not really the theme of his career. The theme of his career is long something that lasted for a long time or even if something was short, something in which either he made a lot of money or a lot of fame or got a lot of satisfaction, something that is either very productive or something that was long. You measure either in terms of productivity, in terms of what was achieved because the career is basically nothing but the karma, the work that you do for the society. So something important that you did either for yourself or for somebody or, or the society at large or something that was very long lasting. So one of the two must be fulfilled. Then only you will be able to see it very clearly in the Dasanshya chart. Otherwise it will be one of those tenth lord is being affected by Mars, so that is why you had that particular career. It will be one of those things. So those, those are tough to really predict unless you go to the resolution of an annual chart. An, of an annual chart. So let us just focus on the main career. The first job, the first long job that he had, which was in a cement company, a mechanical engineer who was doing cost estimation, project cost estimation. And also the material track. planning, you know. Material planning. Mainly steel. I was in charge of mining. Okay. Procuring steel. So, procuring steel. steel etc. Material, materials, etc. Now, let us see the data. What was the data at that time? 1971 to 1989. He was running the other time. That's not what you want to say, right? You want to see the mark, that's right, because he joined the mark. I'm not, I'm not looking at when he joined job. If I want to see when he joined job, somebody can join a particular job because... No, but we are, the first thing we are going to do is uh, correct the timing in detail. Yes, yes. So if you are taking the August 2nd when he joined, yeah. then that falls in the previous time. Right. I'm, I'm actually not doing that right now. Okay. We can do that also. You can look at when somebody joined a job. In order to get a job, there must be... Getting a job is basically recognition. So at, at that date and time, at that, in that particular month, there must be an, a dasya, an antar dasya that promotes recognition of your ability. Right. But what I want to do is, just look at, because he has such a long career in a particular company, it's 15 years. Rahu. It was Rahu. mainly in the Rahu dasya, so for most of Rahu dasya, right. he was doing a particular kind of work. Right. Why? And which placement of Rahu, 10th house or 11th house or 12th house, explains that better. Yeah. So that is what I want to, that is what I want to focus on. So Rahu dasya was, it gave a consistent career, a particular career in which he stayed for a long time. So, in order to see what kind of results Rahu gives, let us look at Rahu where Rahu is, is and what Amsha, what Amsha he occupies. Rahu is in Indraamsha. Indra so, irrespective of where Lagna is in Dashamsha, the very fact that Rahu is in Indraamsha, what would that show to you during Rahu Dasha? 
He'll, he'll be a leader there. He'll be a lead. He'll be an important person. Yes. Why am I getting a ghora amsa for the Rahu? Because you have sashtamsa, not dashamsa. Send it to dashamsa. Dashamsa is... Oh, okay. Okay? Okay. Like because ghora is, doesn't find a place in dashamsa lot. Okay. It's only the Dippalaka uh, in the case of dashamsa. Okay, now you have Indra? Okay. So Indra, we talked about the Dippalaka. And we said that Indra, Indra is basically the Dikpalaka who rules over power. And we saw that in the case of, for example, politicians or influential actors, we saw Indra Samsa being really prominent. Basically, Indra Samsa is shown some prominence, some being a king. It doesn't have to be a king, but somebody who is considered, who has the power like a king. So, did you have... During that period, Manager. were you basically, were you in charge of something and people would, people would follow you or? I didn't have any, like, people reporting to me, but I was doing the kind of work at the time. Yeah. In, in that work, were you the final authority or the, did you have any power to make decisions and whatever you decide, basically, no. more or less? You didn't have any? But I was the only one for that position. I just take it, you know, whatever I make and take it my boss. Yes, fine. Um, that's a good point, but we have, let, let us stick to, because Sandra Vinchodri also works, so let us stick to that, but that's a good point. Actually, you know what, if you really want the best results in this particular start, if you want real, sorry, if you want a really, if you want really consistent results, this is the best, not even Sandra Vinchodri like you are saying. This is the, yeah. This is the real Pardon me? See, the thing is, if you have, because all of you have the software, you can just experiment with it in the case of Nakshatra Dasha. If you go to this tab, Nakshatra Dasha, at the top you have Vinchotri Dasha, Ashwatri Dasha, Kalajatra Dasha, and Yogini Dasha. And here you have all these various Dasha, right? And these are basically conditional Dasha. These Dasha do not apply to every individual. These dashas apply to those people who have certain conditions satisfied in their chart. And the condition for disruptive of the chart is, if you click on it, Lagna Lord is in And if you read here, what is the condition? Can somebody read it? Yes, read it. Lagna Lord is in 7th or 7th Lord is in Lagna. See, that's what this condition here says in, in bracket. Yeah. Applicable if Lagna Lord is in 7th or 7th Lord is in Lagna. This should be seen only in the Rati chart, yeah. this main condition. Yeah. So, so if you go to the Rati chart. 7th Lord is Saturn. Yeah. And he is in Lagna. Yes. The seventh house Lord Saturn, he is in Lagna. So, because the condition is satisfied, this dasha applies. Another important dasha, if you remember, is that there is a dasha called Shasti Hayani dasha. It's also called Shasti Sama dasha. In this dasha is applicable is? Sun is in Lagna. Sun is in Lagna. If you see sun in somebody's Lagna, you apply this dasha. And there are some other dasha, but not all of them are important. Satabdika dasha, another dasha. This dasha is applicable is? Lagna is in Vargotma. Lagna is in Vargotma. Do you remember what Vargotma means? The same planet which is in Avamsa. Yeah, the planet repeats the same position, same sign oh. in Rasi and Avamsa. So if Lagna is in, suppose somebody has Lagna in Leo, in Rasi chart. And suppose Lagna is in Leo in Navamsa also. Then you say that Lagna is in Vargotma. Okay. On the other hand, if not Lagna, but let's say Mars is in Taurus in Rasi and Taurus in Navamsa. Then you say that Mars is in Vargotama. This particular dasha is applicable if Lagna is in Vargotama. And do you want to check if he has Lagna in Vargotama? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Leo, Leo in Rasi and Gemini. Gemini in Navamsa. So he doesn't have Vargotama. He doesn't have a... Only for, the, only for Lagna, is it? This is Lagna only. You see Lagna in Vargotama. Because I want to see this condition. Applicable if Lagna is in Vargotama. This particular dasha called Satavdika dasha, it is applicable if Lagna is in Vargotama. So I want to check whether he has Lagna in the same sign in Rati and Avansha. If he does, then Satavdika dasha would apply. Okay? The thing that you have to remember is there are other dasha. Chodashotri dasha, Panchotri dasha, Sashti, Sashtrimsa Samadasha, which is 36 years. Dwarashotri dasha, there are so many dasha. But the, but the thing is, some of those dashas are applicable to half the people. Even though they are conditional, they are applicable to half the humanity. And those dashas, even if they are applicable, 
If there is another dasha that is applicable, that takes precedence. A dasha like Saptati Samadasa that is applicable in his case is not applicable for half the humanity. How many people have either Lagna Lord in 7th or 7th Lord in Lagna? 50 percent, 50 percent, right? No. 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 If you take Lagna Lord, the probability that he will be in the 7th house, what is the probability? One twelve. One twelve. One twelve. Right? Assuming that each planet has equal probability of being in any house, the probability that Lagna Lord will be in the 7th house is one twelve, theoretically. And the probability that 7th Lord will be in Lagna is again one twelve. So the probability that either this or that will happen is? One, 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 no, 1 12 plus 1 12 minus 1 over 144. Probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. And probability of A intersection B is probability of A times probability of B, assuming A and B are independent events. And here probability that 7th Lord is in Lagna and Lagna Lord is in 7th. That is basically independent event. So, roughly it is 1 6. It is exactly speaking 1 6 minus 1 over 144. That is the exact mathematical probability under very reasonable assumptions. But roughly it is 1 6. So if you take the whole humanity, only 16 percent have this chart, this dasha applicable. So it is a more powerful dasha. Any dasha that is not applicable to all the people, that is applicable to a small percentage, give that dasha priority. If you see two dashas applying, that dasha should get higher priority. On the other hand, any other dasha like for example, Shatrimsa Samrasa, this dasha is applicable for daytime births in Sankhara or nighttime births in Moonshara. What that means is when you read Sankhara and Moonshara, don't think of the hour. We talked about hora, the hour division of the day. That's not the hora we are talking about here. The hora we are talking about here is the hora chart, the D2 chart. In D2 chart, if you remember, all planets are either in Moonshara or Sankhara. Yeah. So, for example, if you want to see, let us see if this dasha is applicable in this case. Actually, in the next release of the software, I will have a feature where it will tell you which dasha are applicable so that you don't have to do this analysis yourself. <laughs> but it is not very difficult. So First of all, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never, never, never. Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> Out of prediction mode. <laughs> so, if you see, first, is it daytime birth or nighttime birth? It's daytime. Daytime. Look at the time, 1055. And by the way, to see daytime birth or nighttime birth, don't look at the time and jump to conclusion. For example, we were looking at somebody's chart. He was born at 8 3. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, that's daytime birth. But if you look at the sunrise, it was at 8 yeah. So, it's nighttime birth. So, in some places, the sunrise can be as late as 8.30 or 9 and sunset can be as early as 3 o'clock. So look at the sunrise and sunset before you decide whether it is daytime or nighttime. In any case, 1055 is safety daytime. Okay, so this is daytime. And is it Sankhara or Moonshara? Is it Sankhara or Moonshara? Uh, is it Sankhara or Moonshara? Do you remember how you divide into Hora? Even has an affinity towards, even in basically female, it has an affinity towards moon. Odd is male, so it has an affinity towards sun. So when you divide the sign into two parts, the first part always goes to the planet that the sign has affinity to. So in the case of even signs, the first half goes to moon and the second half goes to sun. In the case of odd signs, the first half goes to sun and second half goes to moon. Here, sun is in Leo, odd sign or even sign? Come on. One, two, three, four, five. Leo is fifth sign. So that's an odd number. So odd sign. Odd sign. First half or second half? Six degrees is less than fifteen degrees. So it is first half. So that means Sanshora. So he was born during daytime in Sanshora. Okay? And which Paksha is it? For some some other letters it does. I just want to go through the list. Krishna Paksha. So remember this. He was born during daytime in Sanshara in Krishna Paksha. Now let us go to the Dasha. Let us start from Ashwatri Dasha. Here the condition is given. I don't think any of you can read it, so I will read it for you. Some apply it for daytime births in Krishna Paksha and nighttime births in Sukla Paksha. Was he born in daytime in Krishna Paksha? Yes. Yes. But there is an additional condition. Rahu should be in a Kendra from Lagna Lord, Kendra or Kona. Uh, is the factor very fun? No. no. So this is not applicable. 
Karbetra and Yogini are applicable to everybody and those have specific purposes. Let us leave those lasas now. And these are the conditional lasas. Let us go through each, go through each of them. Satsrimsa Samadatha. Applicable for daytime births in Sanfara. Is it applicable for him? Yes, it is applicable. Then secondly, Dvanashotri Gatha. Applicable if Lagna is in Venusian Amsha. What it means is if Lagna is in the Navamsha of Venus. Is his Lagna in a Navamsha of Venus? Okay, Lagna, where is it in the Navamsha sign? It's in uh, Gemini. Whose Amsha is it? Who, who wants Gemini? Mercury. So, it's a, so Lagna is in Mercury's Navamsha. On the other hand, if this Lagna was here, then it would have been in Venus Navamsha. Then this Dasha is applicable. So this Dasha is not applicable. But we saw that two Dashas are applicable so far. Saptati Samadasa, because Saturn is in Lagna, the seventh Lord, and Satrinsa Samadasa, then we have to go to Satrasiti Samadasa, which is, a, which is 84 years. So what is the condition here? Lord applicable is the tenth Lord is in tenth. Again, is this a very common common no common dasha or a very uncommon dasha? Yeah. Very uncommon. What is the probability? One, by one false. 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 But it's not applicable in his case. Now let us go to Shatabdika. We already saw this. Lagna should be in Vargotama and that is not the case for him. And what is the next dasha? Shodashotri dasha. What is the condition? Applicable if Lagna is in Moon Sora. In Krishna Paksha or Sansara in Shukla Paksha. That way also. Is it applicable for him? No. no. no he is the other way. In Krishna Paksha yeah. and Sansara. So this dasha is not applicable. So this dasha is ruled out. Now what are the deshas left? Panchotri dasha. Okay, this is a this is a dasha that applies in very few thoughts. This dasha is applicable if Lagna is in Cancer in both Rashi and Dwarashamsha. And Dwarashamsha. Lagna is in cancer. Right. And this dasha is usually not applicable to most people. This is a dasha that applies to some people who are starting something really grand, who, who begin a big venture or big effort that will last for a long time. People who are in, suppose some Jyoti scholar starts a great Jyoti institute or somebody starts a great spiritual institute or somebody starts a great dancing school. You, you can expect this dasha to apply in those charts. Cancer is basically the sign of Brahma. Out of all the 12 signs, Cancer is the sign associated with Brahma, with creation. On the other hand, Libra is the sign associated with Shiva. It is the seventh sign of the natural zodiac, and Shiva is the Lord, Shiva is the, the God who shows marriage, and also He shows death. Which one is that? Libra, Tula. That is the sign associated with Brahma. Sorry, Shiva. And Pisces is the sign associated with Vishnu. So these three signs, three benefit signs, Cancer, Libra and Pisces, they show Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu. That is why it is said that in some Puranas, the planetary position at the time of Srishti, at the time of creation is given. And in that, in that particular, if you look at those stanzas, you will see that Moon is supposed to be in Cancer, Sun is supposed to be in Cancer, Several planets are supposed to be in Cancer at the time of creation. Cancer is the sign where things start. That is the sign of beginning. So that is why, and Rashi is the chart of physical existence and Dwarashamsa is the chart of lineage. So this it's basically is creation means creation, like moon and sun existed before creation? Yeah. <laughs> yes. When you are talking about creation of a human being, yeah. then we are talking about that physical sun and physical moon. Right. Oh. When you are talking about this whole world, or if you are talking about the chart of Brahma, when you are talking, uh, talking about the chart of Agni, for example, or the chart of Indra, what, what does sun in that chart mean? Mm -hmm. Sun is basically the soul, and moon is basically the mind. And as far as human beings are concerned, it is those planets who are in this particular solar system, who show the mind, soul, intellect, etc. Sun, moon, Jupiter, etc. If you are talking about this whole universe, you have to understand what the soul, the mind and the intellect of this whole universe is. And that sun, moon and Jupiter, it may be something else. It may be some other parts of Vishnu, some other parts of the Paramapurusha, of Narayana. It's very tough to understand and I don't pretend to say that I, I completely understand it, but it is, it is understandable if this concept is basically, there is a higher version of this concept and it's not the same moon and sun that we see. Even before those physical bodies were created, there is sun and moon in this universe. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the, if you look at 
Brahat Parasara Horasastram, which is the classic written by Parasara. In a chapter on Rajyogas, he gave some special, he defined some Rajyogas, and he said that this Rajyoga is present in the chart of Agni, Brahma. He even talked about the chart of Brahma, the creator of the universe. So, and he talked about the chart of the Manu. He talked about the chart of Prajapati. So, everybody has a chart. Even sun and moon have a chart. <laughs> when sun and moon were, for example, moon was born this, this on Kartika. This sun and moon or the other sun and moon? Probably this sun and moon. Okay. They have, they had, sun and moon were born on Kartika point. Yeah. Sorry, moon was born moon on Kartika point. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, he must be. If the city was defined, then sun placement and moon placement must also be defined. So, so let us not go there, let us, let us look at his chart, it's the moon chart. <laughs> so, okay, the point is, like you saw, this dasa, this dasa, satsrimcha uh, samadasa is applicable in his case, right? We saw two conditional dasas apply. What are those? Satsrimcha samadasa, because he was born in daytime in Sansara, and second is Vishaptati samadasa. Okay? Now the... Saptati means 70. Vishaptati means 72. So it's 72 years. Sama means equal. Vishaptati samadasa. Sama means equal. That means all planets get equal portion. In, the, in that particular data. In the case of Vinshwatri, planets get different periods, right? Sun gets only 6 years, poor sun. But Venus gets 20 years. So there is a, there is an inequality. If you see a data where there is inequality, you won't see Sama in the name. If you see Sama, that means it's an equal data. So it's 72, it's basically 72 years. I think 8 planets and 9 years each, I think. 8 times 9, 70. Now what is the basis for this data? How is this data? We'll probably go through the basis of Vinshwatri data in a later class. Let us, let us leave it. Leave, let us leave it for now. Basically, you have to be a Rishi to understand the basis of everything. So for us, these are just rules. But I do know some theories behind the Vinshwatri data, so I can talk about it later. So, the, the point that I wanted to make is, when you try these conditional dashas, you will see that multiple dashas apply to the same nativity. And then the rule is, first, if a particular dasha, if, let's say there is a contention between two dashas, the one that is ra more rarely applicable, give it priority. Shatrimcha samadasha is applicable for half the people. We said daytime birth in Sanshwara or nighttime birth in Munshwara. That means, daytime birth probability is half, Sanshwara probability is another half. So, daytime birth and Sanshwara is half times half, assuming that they are independent events, which they are. So, the probability is half times half, which is quarter. At the same time, the probability of nighttime birth in Munshwara, that is another half, another half times half, one fourth. And those two are basically, there is no intersection between them. They are mutually exclusive. So, the probability, probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B in this case. So, it is exactly half. So this data is applicable to exactly half of human beings and half of animals, half of beings basically. In half the charts you see this data is applicable. So this is not a very rare data. So even if, even if this data is applicable, if you have another data that is applicable, you give priority to that data. That is one rule. Another rule is, let us say that two data are equally rare. It's not that one of them is very rare and one of them is very common. In that case, go by the year. Whichever data has higher year, give it priority. For example, let us, let us say Shodashwatri and Ashtotri apply. Which should be given priority? Sorry. What does Shodashwatri mean? 116. Shodashwatri. Shodashwatri means 16. So, 116 years. What is Ashtotri? Ashtotri. That means 8 over. That means 8 over 100. So, that is 108. So, which gets priority? Shodashwatri. And let us say Dvishaptati Samadasa and Shashti Hayani Dasa are applicable. Which gets priority? Shashti Hayani is 60. Or Shashti Sama, that is 60 years. And Visaptati Samadasa is 72. So give it priority. And let us say Visaptati Samadasa and Chaturasiti Samadasa are applicable. Which should be given priority? What does Chaturasiti mean? Asiti means Asi. In Hindi it is Asi. In Sanskrit it is Asiti. That means 80. Chaturasiti means Chatu Asiti. 84. So should Chaturasiti be given priority? Chaturasiti Samadasa? or Vishaptati Samadasa. Chaturasiti. Chaturasiti, because 84 is higher than 72. So this is how you do it. And in this case, 
if you look at all the dashas, which is the one that applies the most? Dhrisapta is Samadhasya. Now, let us go back to the chart. Because you guys are looking at the chart, if you want to put Vinshwati Dhrisapta, I will put it. If you want me to put Dhrisapta Samadhasya, I will put it. Which, which one do you prefer? Okay, Dhrisapta Samadhasya. And the rules of interpretation are exactly the same. Only the calculation is different. It is basically like Vinshwati Dhrisapta. But, but the, but, one important point. Vimshotri Dasya basically shows the, shows what? Mind. The state of mind. It is the Dasya of state of mind. It tracks your state of mind. On the other hand, what this Dasya shows is, this also tracks state of mind because this is also based on mood. But, there is a very clear focus. In all the conditional Dasya, there is a very clear focus. Each condition symbolizes a particular criterion about that person, a particular quality about that person. For example, seventh house, what does it show? Desire. Desire. Seventh Lord being in Lagna. Lagna is the seat of your intellect. Lagna is basically who you are. So Seventh Lord basically means the consciousness of your desire. The intelligence, the, the lots are always intelligence. Like I said earlier, signs are situation and lots are intelligence, the consciousness, the moving force behind that. So Seventh Lord is the moving force behind your desire. So that is your animated desire, the animation the consciousness behind your desire. So that shows basically the, basically the desire, but the thinking part of the desire, the brain part of the desire, because it's Lord, not the sign. So seventh Lord coming to Lagna means you are obsessed with your desire. You have a particular strong desire, it could be anything, but there is a particular strong desire that the person is obsessed about. So what the seventh Lord being in Lagna, or Lagna Lord being in seventh shows is that person has strong desire. So this dasha shows the fulfillment of those desires. So this is the dasha that shows how your desires are fulfilled, when they are fulfilled, when they start growing. So that is that is the focus. If you want to see marriage, if you want to see childbirth, you may not get perfect results in this dasha. You may be better better off using Mishwatri dasha. Because if you have a child, it directly impacts your state of mind. If you have a wife, you are thinking about marital life, it directly impacts your, your mental state. So, if you want to look at Vimshwati Dasha, you can time all those things very accurately. But as far as pursuit of desires is concerned, this Dasha will dominate. Okay? Now another thing, he is he's, he's interested in having a business. At least people told him and he is... Like independent. I like to be independent. Yes. Yeah. And just, just based on the fact that he has seventh lot in Lagna, can you see it to some extent now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now let us let us go and look at the dasha. And pattern is in lagna is more of the pattern dasha in terms of the chaotic dasha. Yes, good point, good point. Yeah. Now let us look at the dasha. <coughs> the the dasha he was learning when he had a career, when he had a stable career without too many changes. Jupiter. The dasha was Jupiter. Jupiter started, but the dasha when he stayed there for a long time was Venus. 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 So Jupiter started it. What was it? 71, right? 71. Yeah. So Jupiter's son started the career. Jupiter's son started the career and he was there throughout Jup the remaining Jupiter Dasha and almost the entire Venus Dasha. Or was it the entire Venus Dasha? 85, right? Yeah. So entire Venus Dasha. He spent entire 9 years of Venus Dasha in a particular job. Lot of stability. Now let us see what Venus shows. Now, what is Venus? What answer does he have occupy here? Pardon me? It is the answer. It is the answer. Yeah. Venus is in? Varuna answer. What did I say that Varuna show? No, that is Vayu. Vayu is wind. He is strength. Either having strength, showing off your strength, or creating strength in people. So that is Vayu. Varuna is not that. What is Varuna? Like wind. Yeah, Varuna basically is the ruler of the western direction, like Saturn. And what Varuna sh shows is patience. Patience, perseverance, pardon me? Far reach, dealing with people. If you are if you are dealing with lot of people, that is Varuna. And if you are doing business, that is Varuna. If you are doing lot of trading, that is Varuna. Dealing with things, dealing with supplies. Usually Varuna can show business or it's not business, handling somebody else's business mm -hmm. and dealing with lot of people. 
Varna is basically dealing with lot of people and having lot of patience. So that is Varna. And let us go back to the Tathra. Where is Venus? That is the important thing now. Venus is in Lagna. Venus is in Lagna. Venus is in Lagna. Now, and is no one yes, Venus is in one house. Is Venus strong? Yes. yes. Venus, Venus is quite strong in this particular thought. Now, uh, later, in which does have the Saturn, 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 he came. Came. In Saturn, he came, came to US. US. And when you, you said you came to US and you did several, several jobs. Uh, odd jobs, yeah. Several odd jobs. Odd job, yeah. Now, when somebody says odd jobs, does Saturn ring a bell? Yeah. Saturn is the planet of odd jobs. Saturn is the planet of labor and he is also the planet of doing anything. Saturn, Saturn does anything. Sun, he is the king. He just wants nice position. But Saturn, he, he, he can do anything. He is actually forced to do anything. That is Saturn. So, the fact that as soon as Saturn Vesha came, he started doing several odd jobs. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Right? So what brought him but, to you? Pardon me? What that's not Dasamsa. If you want to see what brought him to you, you have to look at Chathuthamsa. Rashi and Chathuthamsa. We'll see. We'll, we'll do that a little later. But let us focus on the career now. Now, during Venus Dasa, if Lagna was in... Tula or Kanya, which makes more sense? He was doing a lot of material planning, etc. Which one makes more sense? So, Lagna and Venus should be in second house. Yeah, second house. What is wrong with second house? Second house is the Arthur Trikona. Yeah, second house is the house of resources. Yeah. Yeah. Both are reasonable. Basically, you want the, the point I want you to make is Venus because Venus gave such a stable career during that time. Venus must have a strong link to the Atha Trikona. He was not doing business then. He was doing. He was in service, right? So, Artha Trikona, the second, sixth and tenth houses, those three houses must be dominant and Venus must have an influence on those houses. Is that how we saw earlier? Yeah. Second, sixth and tenth, that is what we saw to look at the career. So, because Venus Dasha gave such an important phase in the career, Venus must have something to do with second, sixth and tenth. tenth. Now, if you take this house as Lagna, does Venus have a lot to do with the sixth house or second house or seventh house or tenth house? He does not. But he has an argala on the 10th house. This is the 10th house, Cancer, and Venus has an argala on it. So he can give, he can give a very stable career during that time. That is definitely a possibility. On the other hand, if you take Lagna here, if this one is Lagna, then, then what do you see? Venus is the second lord in the second house. And if you see, out of the 10th house and 6th house and second house, the second house really dominates. And who are in the second house? The sixth lord Saturn and second lord Venus. So two of the Artha Trikona lords are together. For career, second, sixth and tenth are important. So two of the lords are together in the second house. So what that means is Tula. Tula is basically Libra is the sign of balance. It is a sign of dealing with people. In the natural zodiac, it is the seventh sign. Libra is the seventh sign in the natural zodiac. So Libra shows diplomacy or or dealing with people, interacting with people, that's what it shows. And the planets there are Sun, Venus and Saturn. Saturn shows uh, people who are laborers or people who are very, people who are in the lower rung of the society. Sun shows bosses. Sun is debilitated. So, so some bosses who are very moody bosses, sometimes angry, sometimes unhappy bosses, and Venus. So Venus is dealing with those two planets. So those are the kind of people that he will be interacting with. And his career is, is basically more defined by the resources that he has than by what he does or the service that he does. It's basically defined by the second house. So do you think, yes, Palin, I'll take your question, but do you think that Lagna in Tula makes more sense or Kanja? Kanja makes more sense. But can you rule out Tula? 
no. we can't rule out we are inclined towards kanjam but tura is also possible let us see more more events and then we will know for sure yes parni you had a question compass nature of uh, we usually don't see combustion in the divisional chart we see it only in the rashi chart but the thing is venus is not very strong here if you if that is your point the point is venus is with a friend saturn venus is in mona trikona his own sign and saturn is exalted but the problem is these two are spoiled by sun they will get a sun it weakens the combustion the combustion is not as bad basically excuse me if any planet is with sun it's called combustion what that means is the planet is burned it is like if you are with a king you you basically can't speak you can't be yourself you are you are basically you keep your mouth shut because you are near king so it is akin to that sun is burning in fire like the number of degrees matter like yes how close they are matter if if they are 10 degrees apart it shouldn't be it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a big deal so if a planet is close to sun then only it is combustion and there is more to combustion we'll talk about combustion later but remember that if a planet is too close to sun then it is burned by the rays of sun any planet any planet any planet but this is particularly true for venus jupiter and mars they are friends of sun so even if they are close to sun it's not really a big deal it is a big deal for venus because to look at the analogy that i gave long back venus is parshurama right out of the avatar of vishnu and sun is rama when parshurama and rama came close what happened parshurama lost his lost all his power he lost all his energy it went to sun it went to rama so similarly in a chart when you see venus and sun together venus loses loses his power sun sun takes away all his power so venus is basically helpless unless he is far away from sun and here this is divisional chart so we don't we don't really have a way to see how far they are so we don't really give it importance we see it in the rashi chart and another thing for mars some people see the combustion but remember that mars is also a fiery planet if sun is fire so is mars and they are friends so it is like fire and fire together so in in other words if a dancing girl goes goes too close to the sun then she, she is basically she is restrained or maybe you can say she is burned but if the chief of the army he goes close to the sun he is fine with him he says oh i need this much army give me this much army then i'll go on fight he can be basically authoritative with the king all other people are they can they can dictate terms to the king but the chief of army is the only one who can dictate terms to the king so if mars is too close to sun he is not bothered by him. venus is really bothered and guru jupiter is not that bothered too because he jupiter is priest he can tell the tell the king say king do this puja this is good for the kingdom so he can he, he can also dictate terms in a different way so not, not the same as mars sometimes jupiter can also dictate terms to the sun so jupiter and being uh, jupiter and sun being together is not such a bad bad thing but venus is bad because another reason is venus is jalatatva he is watery nature and sun is as we talked about when you have water and fire together it's not good for me it's vapor yes water and fire that's the problem when the person is uh, yes whenever we are seeing any chart from do we want to start with um, uh, satyam sat to see what the karma of this person is when no we don't we don't before you advise him okay this is the best chart that is <coughs> ideally you should but it will take a long time to really be sure for me nobody is interested in it <laughs> <laughs> well some people are interested but the thing is it's tough the timing, has to so timing has to be very accurate so let us just stick to the samsa navamsa whatever area of life that he has question on let us stick to those divisional charts and then try to make sure that that particular chart chart is right and then make prediction based on it okay ideally if you want to if you want to give perfect predictions or perfect guidance to a person with how sustain sir you can't do it ideally but you have to take chances and make predictions only based on this much chart so this is practical what you are saying is theoretically the best way but this is the practical way Quick yes question. yeah sir could he actually cause some bad thing by would be most of so yeah what happens rahu rahu and ketu in respect sun yes if saturn rahu or ketu are with sun then sun is in trouble 
Saturn and Sun, even though father and son, they hate each other. Especially son, especially Saturn doesn't like son at all. He doesn't like the race of son. He doesn't like his father. He's a rebel son who hates his father. So when Saturn is with son, or when Saturn is aspecting son in transit, son is really weak. If you are doing anything important, it's not a good time to do something important. And then Rahu and Ketu, if they are with son, they basically call eclipse to the sun. So that is again terrible. Basically Rahu and Ketu, you can look at them as spies, as terrorists, etc. So if they, if they come too close to the king, you have problems. Sun is in trouble, king is in trouble. The Rahu and Ketu being with sun is the worst. If Saturn is too close to the sun, that's a problem, but it's not that terrible. But if Rahu or Ketu are with sun, that is terrible. If you see in the annual chart of a, of a, let's say, president or prime minister of a country, and if you see in the annual chart of a year of election, that Rahu or Ketu is too close to the sun, they may lose election that year, irrespective of other strength. Because sun is the car, giver, the karka of power. So if he is eclipsed, that is terrible. So if you, for example, if you look at Chandrababu Naidu, the Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister's annual chart of last year, this is the mistake I made. I decided, okay, there are other strengths, so Rahu is not enough to cause the fall of sun. He had very close affliction of sun by Rahu in his annual chart. And if I remember right, sun was either Lagna Lord or Tenth Lord or something. Sun was an important planet. And I decided to ignore, because I wanted Chandrababu Naidu to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to ignore the fact that sun was being eclipsed. <laughs> but see, when Rahu eclipses the sun, he does eclipse the sun. Is there any proof for Vajpayee also? No. No. Vajpayee, we don't really know the chart of it. There are several charts. People swear that this is the chart. Somebody said, this is definitely the chart. Muli Manohar Joshi gave it to me. Somebody else said, no, this is definitely the chart. Pramod Mahajan gave it to me. So I know astrologers from Delhi who swear that their own chart, the chart that they give, is the most accurate chart. God knows. So, we don't, we don't really know. And yeah. Mr. Quick question. Are yeah. anybody feeling cold here? Should we send that piece of something? Yeah, we are feeling a little bit chilly. So, even with uh, Libra, uh, Lagna is uh, 65 volt because Jupiter is in second house and is the sixth house uh, large. Yeah. So, that means. Uh, yeah, but Venus Dasha. I want justification for Venus Dasha. Okay. In Venus Dasha, he had a stable career. And another thing. Do you remember what I said about Sun and Venus? Sun and Venus both show management, but I said there is a difference. Does anybody remember it? Yes, Venus is micromanagement. Sun is basically management like a king. The kind of management that Sun gives is basically sit in a chair and tell people to do it. You do this, you do this, you do this, and then you are all set. That is the kind of management that Sun does, like a king. On the other hand, the kind of management that Venus does is very detailed planning. It can be if Venus is the planet who shows management in a particular chart. It can be a project manager who goes through all the tasks, look at how, how much time is given to each of them, or he can he can look at, for example, in his case, it wasn't project management, but it was Detail. all the procurement, etc., procurement Detail. management. So all the details, you go into the details and plan out everything. So the kind of management that Venus gives is micromanagement. And that was, that is basically true in his case. That is why it was, all this activity was basically during Venus Tessa. Okay, now <coughs> let us see, let us see, uh, before we come back to the career and make predictions about future, I want to answer your question. Let me restart the record. Let us, let us come back to his question. His question is, why did he come to US? In 1985, February 21. Yes. Okay. Why did he do that? So, for that, the, the, the chart that we want to see is not Dasamsa. What is the chart that shows residence? D4. First time. Very good. Okay. The chart, the, this is the chart, D4. Now, let us look at the, let us look at the Dasha. What was the Dasha when he came? Saturn Dasha? What was the Antar Dasha? Saturn Dasha, Saturn Antar Dasha. Now, does anybody think that Saturn Dasha, Saturn Antar Dasha could have given this to them? Yes. Yeah? 
Yeah. Yeah. What are the houses? First, let us go back to the basics. What are the houses for foreign journeys? Yeah. Ninth house, twelfth house, and what are the other houses? I said three houses earlier. Seventh house, ninth, twelfth, and seventh. These are the three houses for tra traveling to a faraway place. These are the three houses, right? And uh, what are the signs that are favorable? I said that there are signs that are favorable. What signs are favorable for foreign journey? No signs. Good. Watery signs. So, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Watery signs are favorable for going abroad, for going to faraway places. And planets are who? Who are the Karaka? Basically, Rahu is the Karaka. Let's say Rahu is the Karaka for uh, going abroad. And secondarily, it is his friend Saturn and Ketu, but mainly Rahu. So, the Saturn have any chance? He is the seventh lord. Saturn is the seventh lord. For me, in the fourth house. If there is a male chick in the fourth house, if you have a male chick in the fourth house, what does that planet do? He will move you. If you see in in D4, if you see a benefic planet in the fourth house, what you can what you can say is that person will 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 be happy where he is. But if there is a male chick like Saturn or Mars or Rahu in the fourth house. That will basically mean the person will be forced out, or not literally forced out, but the person will leave where he is. So because the planet is Saturn, and because because the planet is also the seventh lord, so because of that, there is a chance that he will be he will be moved out of his house to a faraway place. And we can also look at Vishwadhi Desha for this. Can't you? Yes. Right. So what was the Vinchadri Desha he was running at the time? Rahu Desha. Rahu Vina. Rahu Vina. So is Rahu capable of taking him abroad? Why? Why? Why very much? Just because he is Karaka? Yes, that's the point I wanted to hear. He is the Lord of the seventh house. I said seventh, ninth, and twelfth are the houses of foreign journey. So Rahu, not only Shani, who was the Dasha lord as per disappearance of Dasha, but Rahu, who is the lord of Dasha as per Vinchotri Dasha, he is also seventh lord. So being the seventh lord and having Grahadrishti on the ninth house, Rahu has Grahadrishti on the ninth house. If you want to see Rahu's Grahadrishti, uh, highlight Rahu, aspected by this planet by Grahadrishti. These are the signs that Rahu acted. So he is acting the ninth house Aries from Leo, and he is the seventh lord. And on top of it, he is Karaka, Karaka for going abroad. So Rahu Desha is certainly capable. Now what about Venus and Desha? Why Rahu Desha, Venus and Desha can come abroad? So Venus and Desha, why? Why did Venus and Desha take him abroad? Yes, Rahu. Yeah, that, that, that's that's fine. But is Venus associated with the seventh house or ninth house or twelfth house? Those are the houses. Yeah, he aspects seventh house. Who aspects seventh house? Venus? No. No. Venus aspects. See, his aspects are by Grahadrishti. He aspects only this side. By Rahu Dasti, he aspects other jewel signs. Venus does not aspect her. Seventh is here. Ninth is here. Twelfth is here. Yes, very good point. Today you are very sharp. You are coming up with all right answers. Venus is with the twelfth lord. If Venus is with Moon, Venus under the sun will give Moon results. Moon under the sun will give Venus results. They will exchange their results. So Venus is giving the results of Moon. And because of that, he is giving the results of twelfth lord, being the twelfth lord. Moon is the twelfth lord, so twelfth is basically displacement, going away from where you are. And now, Pantyantar Dasha, 
it was 85 before April, right? 85 February, right? Okay. Yeah. So, in Rahu Dasha, Veena Santar Dasha, the Pratyantar Dasha is Jupiter. And now, I want to, I, I, I think I mentioned this point earlier. When you are timing events, more than the Dasha, Antar Dasha will make better sense. And more, more than Antar Dasha, the Pratyantar Dasha should be perfect. Because Rahu is one of the candidates. If you are making a prediction, when he will leave, leave his motherland, can you say for sure that it is Rahu Dasha? Why not Moon, uh, Venus Dasha? Because Venus is with 12th Lord Moon. It is very much possible. Rahu is only one of the candidates. He is not the strongest candidate, right? Yeah. So, the result, a particular result is not necessarily given in the Maharaja of the strongest planet. Strongest candidate for giving a result. It can be a weak candidate also. But when you go to Antar Dasha, because you are not focusing on a 20 year period or a 10 year period, but in Antar Dasha you are focusing on a couple of years. So, the focus has to be stronger. So, if you are looking at Antar Dasha, the planet has to make more sense. And if you are looking at Prachyantar Dasha, you are looking at just a few months. So, during those few months, during those how many months? Five months. His mind was totally focused on that foreign trip. Getting visa, am I ready, are my tickets there? So, his mind is so focused on that foreign trip or leaving his country. So, that is the theme of that, that particular Prachanta Dasha. If you look at the whole Antar Dasha, it was from 83, 83 May to 86 May. So it was two years. So during those two years, the six months he spent on his foreign journey. Yeah. It was a small part. There were other things happening in his life. Maybe for some time he was happy where he was. Maybe after one year, he suddenly, suddenly something came up and he left. You never know that. So when you are looking at Antar Dasha, the Antar Dasha Lord has to show several things in addition to what we are focusing on. But if you look at Prachyantar Dasha, the Lord has to show that particular event because you are really focused. You see what I am saying? So always the Prachyantar Dasha has to be the perfect Prachyantar Dasha. So if you want to see, if seven out of 7th, 9th and 12th, which is the most important for, foreign, for, for going away? 9th house. 9th house is the most important house. So the planet owning the 9th house, or the planet occupying the ninth house becomes the main main planet for giving that result. Okay? And another important factor here is apart from seventh, ninth and twelfth, there is a sign known as Bhajgasthana. I think I mentioned it earlier. Bhajgasthana. Yeah. That is important for foreign journey. No. Bhajgasthana for mobile science is the eleventh sign. Eleventh house. For fixed science it is ninth house. For dual science it is seventh. So here Leo is a fixed sign. Mobile fixed jewel. Mobile fixed jewel. Mobile fixed jewel. Mobile fixed jewel. So Leo is fixed. For fixed sign, the ninth house becomes Bhadaka. So if you count nine from there, this is the ninth house. So Aries is the Bhadaka sthana. So especially for fixed sign rising, remember that ninth house is very important for foreign journey because it is not only the ninth house but it is Bhadaka sthana also. So it has Signification two ways. It, it, it becomes qualified in two different ways. So ninth house is extremely important. So who is the ninth lord here? Mars. Mars. And who is the planet in the ninth house? Jupiter. So Jupiter, present is a very strong planet. And indeed, indeed it was in moon. It was, it was in Jupiter period. It was in Jupiter, present that he left. Okay. But how does Jupiter play on there? You are talking about Mars or Jupiter? Either. Either could give the result. The planet there or the planet warning it. Both could give the result. But especially because Jupiter is also the 8th lot. So Jupiter is what house that he owns here? 8th house. From Lagna, right? 5th house and 8th house. 8th house is the house, it's house of instability, anxiety, tension, changes. So that is what the 8th house shows. And being the 8th lot in D4, Jupiter will show a lot of instability related to where you are living. So during that period, during those, during those five months, there was some instability. He came to a new place, he was settled, getting settled, maybe he was moving around, he, he, he was living one place, then he went to another place. There are so many changes that are happening. Earlier he was stably living in one place. Now there are so many changes. So that is what Jupiter being the eighth lord, he is qualified to signify that. Lot of instability in the first few months of moving. So more than Mars, who is in Lagna, Mars is in Lagna, right? Compared to him, Jupiter is a stronger candidate. 
So Jupiter percent of Jupiter is a perfect percent of Delta per three. And you know what? You could even look at Tiffany astrology Delta. So let us look at 1984. 85 is 10 years. Yes, but 84. 85 different start to start sometime yeah. in June 84. June 85. Oh, okay. You were born in June. Yeah. So exactly. if you want to see the active year, oh, okay. it was next. It was previous year. Okay. So let us make 1984. Are you saying 84 is said again? 84 June, there was one birthday and one chart started for one year. Then 85 June, another birthday comes and another chart starts for the next year. And he, was, he came here in February 1985, before that chart started. Okay. Is it clear to everybody? Good. So, let us look at, first let us look at who is the roller of the year. Who is the roller of the year? Uh, for a lot. In Sisi Pravesh chart, for a lot is the roller of the year. The houses owned and occupied by him, they, they, they tell you what is the focus during that year. What is the main event, what is the theme during that year. Okay. Now look at the Rashi chart and somebody tell me. What does Mercury show? Twelve plot. Twelve plot and another house. You are forgetting another house. What houses does Mercury want? Ninth and twelve. And where is he placed? Seven. So all the three houses that I said, the seventh, the ninth and the twelve are connected. And Mercury is the one who connects them. Is that clear to everybody? Ninth plot and twelfth plot being in the seventh house, he basically, he, 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 he connects all the, all the things. So, the, so irrespective of dachas and other things, basically there is a strong likelihood, just based on who the ruler of the year, there is a strong likelihood that this person will go abroad or if he is already abroad, he will flourish there. So that is, that is what you can say, just based on the horror lord and the placement. Okay? Now let us look at the dachas. And let us also look at Sahama. If you look at this particular window, or you can even see here, in basic, if you look at key info, you have this longitude window, right? In this, if you click the pop-up menu, at the end you have something known as Sahama. So there are things known as Karya Siddhi Sahama, Punya Sahama, Rajya Sahama, Paradesa Sahama, Paradara Sahama, Vivaha Sahama, Putra Sahama. These are all Sahama means an important point. All these are important points in the zodiac relating to a particular matter. So sometimes when somebody comes abroad, you may see a link between some important planets in the chart and Paradesa Sahamam or Jalapatana Sahamam. So let us see where they are, okay? And if similarly somebody is married, Vivaha Sahamam is the point for that. So there are several points that are defined. Now Paradesa Sahamam, first Jalapatana Sahamam. Where is Jalapatana Sahamam? See, see here Jalapatana Sahamam. It shows crossing ocean. This is important for going abroad. So it is in where is it? Leo. Leo 12 degrees. Just remember that. We will we'll come back to that later. Jalapadana is in Leo. Now, Paradesha, where is it? Capricorn. Paradesha is a 20 degree, 23 degrees Capricorn. Okay? Now, see if the, if the Lord of Either has a connection with the planet who is giving the foreign trip or with the Karaka Rahu. If any of the lots of those Sahamas have a link with Rahu, or Mercury in this case, because he is the, he is the planet giving foreign trip. If they have a link with one of those two planets, yes. then there is a, there is a good chance that it will happen during the year. Okay? Now let us see. For me? There are different Sahamams for different matters. They show, for important areas of life. These are, these are points. These are significant points in the zodiac which signify a particular matter. So each one that is moving basically with the chart. Yeah, these are basically fixed in the chart. If you make the next year's chart, they are, they are somewhere else. But each annual is the chart. Yeah, yeah. In any chart, these are there. Whether it is natal chart or the previous chart, in any chart, these are defined. For the chart, just like you say sun is at 29 degrees in Leo, moon is at 17 degrees Taurus, just like that, you say, Paradesa Dhamam is at 23 degrees Capricorn. Like that, these are points in the zodiac. Mathematical points. And based on who occupies them, who is close to them, who owns them, and who they are associated with, you can say whether that particular area of life 
will have an important event during the year or not. Okay. Now, let us first see Jalapadana Dhamma. Will he cross autumn during that year? Yes. There is a difference like if, if you do here or if you do in the Sujik Ravi Sajja. Yeah. It is coming like uh, Paradis Dhamma is yeah. coming in the Sujik Ravi Sajja. Yeah. Which one needs to be different? In the Tithi Pravesh card, because we are using it in a Tithi Pravesh card, Tithi Pravesh card. Right. In Find it in Tithi Pravesh card. I uh, right click and I got different one. Oh, you did? Yeah. Find Tithi Pravesh card. Yeah. And oh, oh, oh. you get it here, yeah. That shows different. It has 14 Tharas particles. Yeah. No, it is the same. No, no, again you can like this, right? Here, yeah. 14 Tharas yeah. 44. To show the people how one only. See, if I say Natal uh, Sat, then it is 6 Paises. Punja Sahamam is at 6 degrees, Paisa is 6 minutes. So uh, that is for the Natal Sat. If I say Tithi Pravesha, mm -hmm. it should be 14 degrees, 44 minutes for Punja Sahamam. If you are getting something else, something, you are doing oh, something else. Okay. What are you doing? I, I, I clicked on the Natal Sahamam from my Okay. Oh, okay, okay. You yeah, see, okay. there are two things here. Yeah, yeah. Where are Natal Sahama? Uh, See here, yeah, yeah. there is a Natal Sahama. Yeah. So he clicked on that, that is why he was getting both. If you click on this, you will get yeah. for the current chart. Whether it is Natal chart or Tithi chart, you will get for the current chart. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, okay, let us go back to the longitude. We said that Jalapatra Sahama, the point that shows crossing motion. Yeah. First of all, where is it placed? Is it placed in an Zero. important sign? It is placed in Bhadakasthana. What is the Bhargasthana for Libra? Libra is a movable sign. So the 11th house will be Bhargasthana. So Leo will be Bhargasthana. So first of all, the Jalapadana Sahamam is placed in a, in, in not A, in B Bhargasthana. That is point number one. And the lot of that sign, where is Sun? Sun is with Rahu. 8th house is not important. He is with Rahu. That is important. So, Jalapatana Sahamam is in Bhagavatasthana and it is connected to Rahu. Rahu, the Karaka of foreign trade. So, we have a connection with the Karaka and Bhagavatasthana and Jalapatana Sahamam. Now, secondly, secondly is, there a, is there a link between the other Sahamam, Paradesa Sahamam? Who wants Paradesa Sahamam? Do you remember? Where is Paradesa Sahamam? It was in Capricorn. Who wants it? Saturn. Is he associated with the 7th, 9th or 12th or Bhagavata? Is he associated with those? Can anybody tell me? Saturn is with seventh lord Mars. Mars is the seventh lord, right? And Mars is at 25 degrees in Libra. And Saturn is at 18 degrees, 18 and a half degrees in Libra. So they are reasonably close. Those two planets are reasonably close. So Saturn is associated with the seventh lord. So there is a link between Pardesi Hamam and the 7th house also. Not only that, but if you see, Saturn is in Samsaptaka with, the, with Mercury. Saturn is aspecting Mercury. Saturn and Mercury are aspecting each other. <coughs> so, Pardesi Hamam Lord Saturn is linked with both 7th Lord Mars and 9th and 12th Lord Mercury. He is on their axis. He is with one of them and aspecting the other one and as being aspected by the other one. So, because of that, Saturn finishes the linking. So both the Sahamas are very closely linked with the 7th, 9th and 12th house or Baraka or Rahu. So now there is a very good chance. Not only that, but we saw that Hora Lord was 9th and 12th Lord in the 7th house. So there is a very good chance that he will go abroad or leave his motherland during that, during that particular period. And another important point, when I say abroad, don't think that with this particular chart, it doesn't have to be abroad. The person can go from Tamil Nadu to yeah. Kashmir, for example. That is that is basically like foreign foreign trip. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Going to a foreign, going to a place where the culture is different from yours. Mm -hmm. That is what Rahu, Ninth House, Twelfth House, all these show. It doesn't necessarily mean America or UK. It so can be Jalapatana means yes, crossing motion. But seventh, ninth, and twelfth, seventh house, ninth house, twelfth house, and Bhadaka and Rahu. Those factors that I mentioned, they are not necessarily crossing Boston and going to a different country. They basically mean, if you go from Boston to California, you are basically going into a different culture. Pardon me? Crossing lakes. Okay, crossing lakes, yeah. 
you had a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you said the shareable signs for moving are uh, watery signs. Yeah. Um, so again, maybe you answered this. It need not have to be a broad uh, crossing ocean. It can be, when you say watery, it is not related. If watery signs are Jalapatra Sahamam are involved, then it is probably crossing ocean. Watery signs and Jalapatra. Okay. Yeah. Here, Jalapadra Sahamam is involved. So, probably it is crossing motions, not going from Bombay to Assam, for example. Yes. Charakarkas change every year. Yes, they change every year. And they have to be. Yes, Charakarkas change every year, and you have to see them every year. If you want to use them, see the Charakarkas in that particular year. Okay? See, for example, if you want to see during this particular year. Who is the Atmagarka during this particular year? Venus. Venus is the Atmagarka. And where is he placed in Rashi? First let us look at Rashi and then Navamsa. Where is Venus placed in the Rashi chart? He is in the 7th house. If Atmagarka is in a quadrant, is it good? Yeah, it is good. If Atmagarka is in the 8th house, for example, in the Rashi chart, it shows your soul not being happy. Your soul is not comfortable where it is. But if the Atmakarka is in the seventh house, it is good. It is a year of good fortune. You will feel comfortable with what you are doing. It may or may not turn out to be for your good later. That is a different matter. But during that year, you will feel very good. That's what Atmakarka being in a camera means. Okay? Uh, let, us, let us now go back to the Dasha. What is the Dasha I should use for timing this? Now, uh, before I show you the chart, actually try to guess the data. I, I removed the window. If you didn't, if you saw which data gave the result, then keep quiet. If you didn't, then try to make a guess. Okay? Which is the data that you would expect, honestly? For which one you are asking the question? For going abroad. When he went abroad, which was February 1995, what data do you expect would be running? The main planet is Mercury. So what does that do you expect? We have given this result. If things were working perfectly, we know that sometimes things don't work perfectly because our understanding is incomplete. Sometimes we expect this dasha but we get that dasha. It does happen. But here, assuming that things are working perfectly, which dasha do you expect? Don't think too much. Why Venus? Why Venus? Excellent. I wanted to see if you will say Mercury or Venus. You can say Mercury, but Mercury is with Venus. So Venus is likely to give Mercury's results. So instead of Mercury's data, it is likely to be Venus's data. And it is indeed the case. It was in this period, uh, December 25 to March 10, it was in Venus's data that he came. It was actually, you said February 21, right? Venus Rahu. Mm -hmm. So it was Venus data, Rahul's data that he came across. Okay. So now let us go back to his career. So see how, uh, when you make this Hipravesha chart, Suppose this person came to you and he told you, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to go to... Suppose this person came two years before this chart. He came in 1983 to, to you to you and asked you, when will I go abroad? Instead of looking at Vimshotri Dasha, Satyajama Dasha, Narayan Dasha, etc. If we just make Siti Pravesha chart for the next year, next year and next year and next year. And if you see if there is any strong chance in one of those years, you would have very easily found that this year has a very strong chance. And then you would have... You could have even told him the period. You could have told him during Venus Dasha, during December to March 1995, you are likely to go abroad. You would have made a perfect prediction. See how beautifully it was. In the last six years, most of the correct predictions that I made to people were made based on this technique. Not other Dasha that I teach. Those are also important, but those are fallible. And this is also fallible, but this is less fallible. This is, this is, this is, uh, much much less prone to error than other dasha. So most city privation three dasha. So most of the correct predictions that I made to people were made based on this chart. Usually people don't ask you what will happen after twenty years. Sometimes people do. Then you have to use Vimsha three dasha. You have to use other dasha. But many times people ask you, what when will I get a job? They are looking for a job in the next next five months or six months, when they will get a job. Or somebody wants to get married. And they don't ask about 5-year-old girls, they ask about 20, 25-year-old girls. When will she get married? I am getting married. Or they will ask about children. Again, they have been expecting children but they didn't get, so they will ask you. When will I get children? Usually, whatever people ask you, next five years. it happens in the next 5 years, next 3-4 years. So if you look at the annual chart for those years, you can make very good predictions. 
This is a very, very good tool. Now let us go back to the metal chart, to the sham chart. Um, <coughs> what are the rules for saying he will go back to India? Yes, to those kinds of things. Basically, when the influence of planets that have something to do with the ninth house, twelfth house is over, okay. and when the influence of the last of the first and fourth and fifth house has come, then he may go abroad. Fourth and fifth. We will take him back to. They may take him back to where he came from, where he was born. Rashi and D4, mainly D4. First, fourth and fifth. Fifth is the house of emotions, patriotism. <coughs> First is your birth, birthplace, mother. Fourth is the house of mother. So first, fourth and fifth. If there is a link, if a planet whose Dasha is running now has a link with those signs, those houses, and there is no link with seventh, ninth and twelfth, then you may go go back to where you came from. Okay? <coughs> <coughs> now let us let us go back to Dvisapta Dvisamadasha and the career. Let us say, w uh, to remind you of where we were, we concluded that Libra was plausible, but Tula, uh, sorry, Kanya or Virgo was more likely. more likely. So that is what we concluded. Now let us let us make further progress. Uh, in Saturn, the, in Saturn, the time he was doing several odd jobs. Now give us some more feedback. After 93, yes. between 93 and 2002, after 93, was there, were there any changes? Actually, between 85 and 93, it was very unstable. Lot of jobs now. So he said, one second, one second. He said 85 to 93. 85 to 93. 85 to 93. He said there were lot of changes. 85 beginning, he came here. He said he was doing lot of odd jobs, lot of unemployment jobs. He had unemployment also. Okay? Mindset, yeah. So that is another thing that we should remember. There was unemployment in Saturn Dasha. Yeah. But that, I'm not sure if we can explain or not. We will we'll try to do that a little later. But apart from that, the very fact that it was Saturn Dasha means okay. there is lot of hard work, lot of odd jobs. Now, because that Dasha is getting over in 93, even though Rahu is not a great planet, he is basically like Saturn, but still it is a different planet. So the Dasha is changing in 93, so that is why I was asking him, were there any changes after 93? So we want to see what kind of results Rahu gave and correlate it with the chart. So what, what did Rahu Dasha give after 93? October 93, I was unemployed for 13 months before that, and October 93 I got a job. Okay. And it was a total change, I was computer network engineering from there. And to the, still today I am in that field, kind of almost stable now. Computer so network. Yes. Okay. Network, I am not no mechanic at all. Totally uh, different from <coughs> Okay. Networking. So, Rahu took him into computer. Is that possible? Yes. 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 Rahu and Ketu are planets of computers and electronics technology. and technology, high tech. Can you see the answer of Rahu? Yes. We will we'll, we'll see that a little later. But now, uh, so Rahu Dasha gave him a break. Do I give you one more information? Yes. yes. I will let, let you uh, predict. I was laid off four times in, this, uh, in my career, yes. Okay, we, we don't want to okay. go to each of those periods no, and see why. Tell you that okay. Happened, yeah. yeah. So he was he was laid off several times. So that, so that is another information. So if somebody is being laid off several times, what does it mean? And usually those layoffs, did they did you expect them or did they come suddenly? Whenever they happened? One of them happened very suddenly. I mean, two of them happened suddenly. One of them was kind of Okay. The eighth house is generally layoff is eighth house. Yeah. Third house is a short break from yeah, Kerry. Unexpectedly, I happened right. Eighth house is layoff. Why I ask suddenly is because if you take yeah. Virgo, if you take Virgo as the lagna, let us let me move it so that you can imagine it better. If you move the lagna to Virgo, where is eighth house? This <coughs> <coughs> Aries. Aries is the sign of suddenness. Aries is a dynamic sign, Chararasi. And the planet there is Mars. Mars is again, he is the soldier. And Mars shows sudden development. If you see Mars in the 8th house, those people will be, will have changes in career which just suddenly happen. Sudden and unexpected. So that is why I asked whether 
those those layoffs were like you know you are going to lay, be laid off and then you work for two months and then you pack your bags and they are like suddenly there is a surprising news that is what mask you know so it is like it is possible that like nice work or like we are suspecting now let us go to rahu dasha now rahu gave when rahu dasha started he started badly he didn't have a job at the time i mean that's what no rahu dasha that was in 71 No, no, no. I'm talking about this round, sir. Yeah, I, I was unemployed for <coughs> months. September '92 to October '93. Thirteen months I was unemployed. Okay. Yeah. Thirteen months he was unemployed, mm-hmm. and then suddenly, uh, and then suddenly Rahul Dasha came. Rahul Dasha, Rahul Dasha. In you said October, right? October. Uh, yeah. So Rahul, Rahul. Yeah. Suddenly he he got a job. Yeah. October 25th I got a job on '93. Uh, I got a job. Okay. Is Rahul. राहु राहु मून राहु दशा राहु अंदर दशा मून प्रचंड दशा ही खरंदी काटे जा नाउ व्हाट काइंड ऑफ विजर्स डज राहु शो इफ दिस इज द लग्ना व्हाट व्हाट डज राहु शो हु सेस राहु इज वेल प्लेस इन दिस थॉट हु सेस ही इज बैडली प्लेस बट वेल प्लेस रे जो हैंड बिकॉज़ ही गेव जॉब एक्सप्लोर कर दीजिए so dusthana lord in dusthana so what is the name for that vipreet rajyoga reversal reversal rajyoga it's not a normal rajyoga it's a reversal rajyoga that means first bad and then suddenly bad situation is reversed and then there is a there is a rajyoga that is what vipreet rajyoga show vipreet means reverse so uh, the fact that rahu is the sixth lord in the 12th house means his dasha when his dasha started things were quite bad and then suddenly there is a reversal and he found a nice opportunity and i told you earlier prachanta dasha has to be the perfect under dasha perfect period what about the prachanta dasha is moon prachanta dasha likely to give him a new start a fresh lease of life in career yeah he is lagna moon is in lagna and i told you earlier what is lagna show lagna in the sense you beginning in career fresh start in career so the fact that moon is in lagna in the samsa means rahu rahu moon is likely to give that fresh lease of life there is a new beginning that he made and because the dasha is not sat on the dasha anymore he is not doing any odd jobs anymore he is doing rahu kind of jobs which are technology, technology high tech etc and now what is the amsha if you remember it is indra amsha but i show it you again you remember good so rahu is in indra amsha So Rahu is in Indramsha. So do you think that he is likely to be in a good position during this period? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you say that he is likely to be in a very nice position during this this period? So most of the class thinks that you did well during this period, Rahu period. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. But Rahu period goes from 93 to now, is it? No, 2002 only. 2002. Uh, in 2001, I was unemployed. I mean, I was laid off twice. Sometimes Indra का ऐसा Indra ऐसा क्या trade आप but they bought it. No but yeah, it's good. Who is seen after that? I got a job immediately. But overall during that period, overall that period more satisfaction and then some stability and also some influence. Yeah, at table influence at the place where you work. Yes, and I bought my house as well. Also during this period. So. Okay, he bought his house, but let us leave that. That is again from D4, but let us leave that. Now he was unemployed. So overall, his feedback is during Rahu Dasha, things were good. good. Rahu is in Indramsha. The thing is, if a planet in Indramsha is fifth lord or lagna lord, or placed in the fifth or first, that is good. If the planet is placed in a Rajoga, that is uh, is giving a Rajoga, that is good. But the planet is in Dusthana, twelfth house. So even if he is in Indramsha, you don't expect him to be a big boss during that period. The same Rahu had lagna been here in Libra. The same Rahu would have been the fifth lord. So fifth lord being in Indramsha would have been good. So then he would have been a big boss, a big manager, a big shot. But now because he is in Indramsha, he has some influence where he works, around his workplace. People listen to him. There is certain influence that he can wield. But still, it is limited because Rahu is not giving the Rajyoga. He is giving the priest Rajyoga. He is placed in a dusthana, in a bad house. But overall, this is a very good period, right? And by the way, we forgot to look at the Amshalad of Saturn. 
Who is the Amsara of Saturn? Yama. Yama. What does Yama mean? Yama is basically just doing things, doing your dharma impassionately. So especially Saturn is, Saturn also has the same nature. So if Shani is in Yamamsa, what kind of results would you expect? Just routinely, just because you have to do it to get your money, just do it. Don't think about it. No passions, no emotions. You may not even enjoy it, but just do, do your job. So that is, so that is what Saturn in Yamamsa gets. And Venus in Varunamsa gets, dealing with lot of people, planning, micromanagement. And, and Rahu in Indraansa gets some success, influential position and high tech. See how the dashas maps well. Had we tried to explain this with Munshwatri Dasha, we will be able to explain main events when he got job, when he was laid off, but things would not line up so well. On the other hand, because we have the right dasha in front of us, things line up perfectly. That is the power of the dasha. Parasha starts hundreds of dasha. And my software has only like 50 dasha or so. There are more dashas that I did not put in the software because they are not very clear from the text of Parasra. But there are so many dashas and the uh, phases for masters are deciding what kind of patterns your life will follow based on the conditions in your, in your horoscope. And we have to, we still have to understand those dashas. But this, this example should illustrate, illustrate to you that when you have the right dasha in front of you, things will line up beautifully. Now let us see your layoff. When were you, you said you were laid off. Right? In Rahu Dasha. Yeah. Actually, we, we, without him answering, can anybody try to guess it? If somebody, somebody from the class guesses it, that will be nice. In 2001, you were... Know. When? In 2001, you were... Know. March. Rahu March. Rahu March, 96, 98. 96, 98. So, somebody is guessing, 96, 98, he was laid off. That's, that's not true, right? He had a 96, 98, no. He was not laid off. No. I changed job in 1998. Yes. See, the thing is, now if you look at it, why I ask him that's not true is because even though from Lagna Mars is in the 8th house, from Rahu he is very well placed. From Rahu he is in a prime. And when you are looking at Mars Santa Desha, don't think that Mars Santa Desha will always have a particular nature. Mars Santa Desha in different Deshas will have different nature. From Rahu, if you take Dasala, Rahu as Lagna, from there Mars is in 9th house. He is in the house of Bhagya. He is the lord of the sign. He is strongly placed. So that is a sign when the Bhagya should be quite strong. As far as Rahu Dasa is concerned. If you look at Mars, Dasa itself, that will be bad. Lot of changes. And overall also, what Mars shows in this chart is lot of changes. And some layoffs also. But within Rahu Dasa, Mars under Dasa is likely to be quite good. But at the same time, because Mars is in the 8th house from Lagna, he can give changes. But being in the 9th house from Dasha Lord, the same Mars is likely to give a change which is fortunate, which makes him more fortunate. Because from Rahu, Dasha Lord, he is in the 9th house. So during the Dasha, Mars can only increase the fortune. He can only make him fortunate. So Mars Dasha is unlikely to, break, unlikely to give him a break. So anybody, any other guess? So 96, 99, 96, 98 is not the period when he was laid off. So when when did the layoff take place? Is that yeah, Jupiter, Jupiter and no, choose one. Who was for Jupiter and the Dasha? Yeah, I think Jupiter has a fairly good thing. Why? Because the eighth house lord. From Rahu? From Rahu. Okay. Eighth lord in third house. Okay. They are looking from Rahu now. Yeah, they are not looking at Deacon anymore. Pardon me? They are all looking at Deacon only. Yeah. I am not looking at anything, I am only listening now. <laughs> 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 you have to make a prediction. They are... From Rahu, Jupiter, 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 Saturn's period, 2001 to 2002, should have fallen. So your guess is 2001 to 2002? Oh, yes, much stronger. Much stronger. Good. So, is he correct? There was one layoff in April of 2001. Yeah. And there was a layoff before that too. Okay. So, both were in Venus. So, he had two layoffs. Yeah. Both were in Venus. 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 Both were in Ven
he he had two layoffs so when was the previous layoff that was the day after thanksgiving on 2000 uh, the monday after thanksgiving okay. okay so both were in no, venus dasha venus yeah. both were actually in venus dasha they were not they were not in saturn because venus and saturn in the same house so venus is giving the rules of saturn good who gives who gives saturn scissors venus venus No, how can you say it's there's no well, the three planets together okay when there are three planets who gives who the result no okay the rule is the one who is stronger no 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 the rule is arrange them in the order of beneficence or beneficence the best benefit planet first then the second benefit third benefit fourth benefit like that so who is the most benefit of all these planets Saturn. what most benefit benefit oh. venus venus yes. so let me say the first planet is let me write Venus. Okay. Oops. <laughs> That was too big. So Venus. Right. Who is the next planet? Next is Sun. Sun. Right? Yeah. Who is the worst maleficent of all of them? Yeah. Next Saturn. Yeah. So if you arrange them in the order of maleficent or beneficent, this is the order. So the rule is once you write down the planet, the first planet and the last planet extend, the middle planet extend like that. So if you have like nine planets, the first and ninth will extend. Second and eighth will extend. Third and seventh will extend. So like that, make a list. So here, Sun will give end up giving his own result, and Venus will end up giving Saturn result. Saturn in Yamamsa, his result Venus will end up giving, and Saturn will give Venus result. So those are now why did so Sri Ram was even though his answer in terms of time was not accurate, his logic was perfect. His, his logic of arriving at Saturn was perfect, but his result is given by Venus. Now, why did you say Saturn? Can you repeat it for the class? Sure, because Saturn is located six thousand one hundred and nine. Six is a lot of six thousand even from Rahu. Yeah. So it's affecting uh, Rahu and is affecting Lagna also. Yeah. Okay, good. But one point that you missed is from Rahu, Saturn is the seventh lord. What does seventh house show? Desire. Break in service. Desire. It shows desire. Mm. It also shows break in service oh. because seventh is the second from sixth. From Rahu, if you take the sixth, sixth is here. This is the seventh. Seventh is the second from sixth. Second means Maraka. Second is the end. So being the second from sixth, seventh house will show end of service. Of course, if somebody has a strong desire and starts a business, that is the end of service too. But end of service doesn't happen just because of business. It happens because of the layoff too. So seventh lord, if the seventh lord is connected with the eighth house or third house, because those are the houses of break. Third house is a short break in career. Eighth house is a long break in career. So if one, if the lord of the seventh house is associated with one of those two houses, you can conclude that during that time there can be a small break in career or some layoff or the person can may go on a vacation or something. So that is what you can conclude. Here, yes, Saturn is the seventh lord. Lord is in the third house. Lord, you said seventh is uh, second from sixth. Yeah. And like sixth is Dusthana. Dusthana, okay, but for Kerala, it is the main sign. It is Sarvis. Sixth house is the main house for Sarvis. Okay. Hard work. Work. The work that you do. When the Maraka to that comes, you don't do any work. Okay. You don't have any service to offer. That that means you sit at home, type type your resume. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <it> is. <laughs> okay. So now. uh how will saturn under the sun can somebody try to retro predict saturn under the sun who will that will saturn give venus the venus is there so how will that period be good venus is very strong venus is fairly strong from rahu venus is in venus is the tenth lord and third lord it should be strong because tenth is the carrier so okay so how many people think that venus and venus The Saturn under the sign Rahu Dasha from 2001 May to 2002 July has been good. How many people think that it was good? Only okay. Majority of the class thinks that that period was better than the previous. And Actually, you confirm it. Excellent. Okay. Why? It's only the third house, but he is tenth lord too. It, it can give a vacation, a short break or a vacation. But because Venus is 
Venus is not associated with the seventh house. He is not the seventh lord or he is not the eighth lord. Either from Rahu or from Lagna. So he is not likely to give a break. On the, on the other hand, from Lagna he is the second lord of resources and ninth lord of fortune. From Rahu, even though he is the third lord in third, he is also the tenth lord of karma, of career. So based on all these reasons, it is Saturn who is troublemaker, not Venus. So you have to see the Arudas. Yeah, we can look at Arunpada also. Okay. But let us, we are doing fine just using Lagna so far. So let us stick to that. Let us not go to Arunpada right now. Can you we'll explain once again what was that uh, Venus, uh, Venus Sun and uh, Saturn yes. they were explaining? See, see, with Rahu, in the, in the Rahu Dasha, mm -hmm. if you look at Saturn, from Rahu, Saturn is the seventh lord. So, oh, I, got, I got all the so, so, right. so, did you get it that Venus is a good planet and Saturn is a bad planet? Yes. Venus will give good results and Saturn will give bad results. Now the issue is, they will end up giving each other results. <laughs> if you have lot of planets together, let me give you some give you an exercise. Let us say, in a particular chart, Jupiter, can you read it? Yeah. Yeah. Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, and, and let us say, Sun. These four planets are together. Okay. okay? Now we want to see who will give whose result. So the first step is arrange them in the order of either decreasing or increasing beneficence. So who is the best benefit of all of them? Jupiter. Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Next, is it Saturn or Venus? Venus. So I will move him up. Mm -hmm. I don't want. So what is this effect which Jupiter will give the effect of each other? It is like if you and I are living together, I will start behaving like you and you will start behaving like me. So if your friend comes and comes to pick up something from you, I will go and give it give it to him. If my friend comes, you will go and give it. It's basically like that. So the planets will end up giving each other results. So, so, and Saturn and Sun, are they in the right order or should I change it again? Uh, it should, should go up. Okay, Sun goes up and Saturn goes right. up. So once you arrange in the order like this, the rule is the first one and the last one will exchange their results. The second one and the second from last will exchange their results. Third one and third from last will exchange their results. So here, Jupiter and Saturn will exchange their results. So Saturn periods will give Jupiter results and Jupiter periods will give Saturn results. And secondly, Venus and Sun, they will exchange. So Venus will give Saturn results, sorry, Sun results and Sun will give Venus results. So that is the rule. That is the rule. This is always the case. This is always the case. There can be some exceptions, but this is the rule. This is not an exception. This is not an exception. This is the rule. So, in this particular case, Venus, Jupiter, Venus and Saturn, Saturn and Sun are Saturn together. Saturn. So, if you arrange them in the order, it is Venus, Sun and Saturn. So, Venus and Saturn will give each other's results and Sun will give his own results because he doesn't have anybody to extend it because odd number of planets. So, Venus Dasha was actually bad because of Saturn and Saturn Dasha, Saturn under Dasha was actually good because of Venus. Venus. Okay? Now, the, the thing that he was actually looking for, we looked at all his parts <laughs> and now, when we are almost out of time, we come to the thing that he was looking for. You, you want some future predictions from people, right? And his question is, somebody told him that he will be a businessman. I will quit my job, he said. You will quit your job. You will quit his job and you will go into business. That's what somebody told him, based on his thought. And also based on his hand. Some promise and astrologers told him that. And he, he wants to know if that is true. And if so, when it will happen, okay? So I want your prediction on that. But what is the dasha running right now? Sun. Sun, <coughs> sun dasha. Is it a good dasha or bad dasha? Which amsa is sunning? Do you want to see that? <coughs> sun is an indra amsa. So it shows influence and power. But, but what, what house does he own and what house does he occupy? He owns 12th house. house and he is in 2nd house. So, for 12th Lord, Devil Dash is it good? Is the sun's Devil Dash and good? Yes. Yes. For a Dusthana Lord, Devil Dash means a blessing. So, sun being in Dusthana is good. Okay? Sun being in Dusthana is good. And uh, moreover, before before we judge the Sandasa, let us go back to the issue of business. 
depends on this chart. Do you think that this is a service chart or a business chart? Service chart. Service chart. Service chart. That's not main is like <coughs> the sixth law. The the sixth house has one planet and the seventh house is empty. So based on the thumb rule, what do you say? The thumb rule is look at the planets in six and seven. Whichever has more, that will be his career. Is a service for six or business for seven. So that is the thumb rule. So just using the thumb rule, what is your prediction? Service. Service chart. This is a hundred percent service chart. And secondly, let us say that is not true. Let us say the thumb rule is not working. Let us look in detail at the sixth law and seventh law. Who is stronger? Look at the sixth law. Sixth law Saturn is is he karka of service? No. Sixth house is the house of service. Yes. And the Lord is Saturn. Is he the karka for service or karka for business? But Saturn is service, right? Yes, absolutely. He is a servant. So sixth law being Saturn and being in the second house and he is with so many planets, right? So sixth law is for me. We should consider Rahu also, but Shani is stronger, right? So overall, the sixth lot is strong, but the seventh lot is he strong or weak? Yes, the seventh lot is in Manakarka sthana. Look at Jupiter. See planets in Manakarka sthana. Jupiter in third house owns fourth and seventh, and he is in Manakarka sthana. So the lot of fourth and seventh houses Jupiter is in Manakarka sthana. For each planet, there is one house. That is called Marana Karaka Sthana, which means death-causing station, Sthana place, death-causing position. For Sun, it is the twelfth house. For Moon, it is the eighth house. For Mars, it is the seventh house. For Mercury, it is the fourth house. For Jupiter, it is the th it is the fourth house. You may have read seventh house in some books, but I will start that it is actually fourth house. Sanjay ji has a habit of mixing some noise in his signal <laughs> for folks, especially when he writes books. Sun twelve, moon eight, Mars seventh, Mercury fourth, Jupiter third, Venus sixth. Saturn first, Rahu ninth. Yeah, basically Lagna is the house of health and vitality. If you place Saturn in the first house, you are telling Saturn, "Hey, Shani, take care of his health. He he is in trouble. He doesn't know how to do it." All these Manakarka sthanas are places where the planet is very uncomfortable. This is different to the Saturn in first or no? This is all third. All third. Any third. Any third. See, for example, in your case, Rajesh is not Shani is in Manakarka sthana, so he is not well placed. Pardon me? In Lagna, in Aries, still he is in Manakarka sthana. If a planet is in Manakarka sthana, during that planet's death, there will be trouble to the houses that he wants. Basically, you are you are telling you are telling Shani, whose job is to give trouble, ill health, diseases, etc., to take care of his health. And he is not happy at all. He is not a happy man. So he has to work hard to give him health. And as a result, neither his health is good, nor the other jobs that Saturn has are taken care of. Saturn's job is six and seven: service and business, service and wife, natural life. So these are the jobs the houses owned by Saturn. So he will not be able to do justice to either those houses or the first house because he has to struggle to give results relating to the first house. He is not comfortable there at all. Similarly, you take Jupiter in the third house. Third house is the house of boldness, weapons, and you place a priest there. Tell him take care of his weapons, give him good weapons. Oh man, I don't know, but the only weapon is weapon I know is Gayatri Mantra. He is <coughs> so, so Jupiter is extremely uncomfortable there. And similarly, Sun is the king. You place him in the twelfth house of giving up, renunciation. He is not happy. That is that is not his natural instinct. And Venus is the karka of enjoyment. enjoyment, and you place him in the sixth house of uh, of celibacy. Sixth house is the house of celibacy. You place him in the sixth house of celibacy. He is unhappy. He wants people to get together. <laughs> and similarly, Mars. Mars is Mars is the warrior. He is the planet for celibacy. He is the karka for sixth house. That is why Mars is the karka for celibacy. Just like Hanuman ji, Mars shows Hanuman who is celibate, and usually warriors are. Uh, 
uh, more focused on their warfare. They better be, instead of being focused on marriage and girls, they better be focused on their weapons and fighting. And you place that mask in the seventh house, he doesn't know, he doesn't know how to bring people together. The only way Mark knows, if you tell Mark to bring people together is, find gun, come, sit here, tie the knot, and that is how he will get them married. So that is what Mark knows. If you tell him, if you tell Venus, get them married, he knows how to do it. Romance. Yeah, he creates romance between them. He is perfect at that. That is what he excels in. So if you place that Venus in the sixth house, he is sad. Similarly, you place Mars in the seventh house, he is sad. So those two are their Manakargasthana. Similarly, for Rahu, what is Manakargasthana? Nine. Nine. Ninth is the house of Dharma, temple. So you tell, you tell a cheat, a scoundrel, take care of this temple, do puja every day. <laughs> Make sure that all the rituals are done every day, every coming. Yeah. Rahu, Ketu is the same thing, right? But Ketu, Ketu there is no Mankar For Rahu, 9000 is Mankar So that is basically, it is like putting a cheat in a temple. So he is, uh, you bring a terrorist and give him a temple or a mask to take care of. For me? Moon wants to be just relaxed, give happiness to people. Ethos is the house of instability, anxiety, tension, changes, etc. Moon is, moon is the karga for peace, mental peace and relaxation. So you tell him, give him trouble. Moon doesn't know how to give trouble. He is, moon is the planet of peace and happiness. He is the karga for happiness. And moon doesn't have any enemies, even if you look at relationships, inter, interplanetary relationships. Moon is happy with everybody. He doesn't have any enemies. Other people may consider moon to be enemy, other planets. But moon per se does not have any enemies. So he is a happy go lucky, relaxed peaceful, peaceful person. You tell him, go and give him, give him some trouble, give him some anxiety. Moon is not, Moon is not happy doing that. Okay, now going back, <coughs> the Lord of the seventh house, <coughs> seventh house, Jupiter, he is in third house. In general, the seventh Lord being in third is good. Why? Because they are Kama Trikona. They work together, third, seventh and eleventh. These are the Kama Trikona, initiative, desire and gain. These are the three Kama Trikona, the, the trines of desire. So if the seventh lot is in third or third lot is in seventh, it is good. There is a link between two Kama Trikona. So that shows a strong desire and also some initiative on his part. But the, but the problem is, but the sadness is, the sad fact is that Jupiter in third is in Manakarkasthana. When you have the seventh lot in, in Manakarkasthana, it is unlikely that that person will excel in business. It is very unlikely. So it's not a, it's not a really, looking at this chart, I will not advise. I don't know what, on what basis they said that you will be a businessman, you will stop your work and you will go into business. I don't know what basis they had for making the prediction. Maybe they were looking at the Rasi chart, maybe in the 10th house show of businessman, maybe that's what they were looking at. But. That's not basically full proof. If you look but at the Dasyamsa, which is the chart for Kerry, I don't really honestly see business. Yes. In the Rasi, there's Venus and Mercury and Sarvatana. Yeah. So the Dasyamsa looks very strong in the Rasi. Yeah. Venus and Mercury, yeah. It yeah. yeah. does. It shows a lot of gains through Kerry. Okay. It doesn't necessarily show business. Oh, the Dasyamsa is gained strong. It doesn't necessarily show business. It necess also, it, it can show a lot of friends relating to his career, lot of, lot of people that he knows, lot of networking, and, and also making lot of money, etc. It doesn't necessarily show business. If you want to see business, the seventh house or A7 has to be strong in the Kamsa. Now, seventh house is weak. Seventh lord is weak. Compared to them, sixth house and sixth lord are stronger. Now, let us finally, the final thing we want to see is, look at A6 and A7. Now, where is A6? <laughs> A6 is in the 10th house, it is very strong, occupied by its own planet. Mm -hmm. So, the A6 is basically the manifested service that you render to the society. So, that is quite strong. On the other hand, if you look at, look at A7, is it strong? I mean, it's okay. It's okay, but it's not really dominating. So, overall, the chances of success in Kerala are very low. Now, let us look at any planets in Kuberamsa. Because if any planets are in Kuberamsa, they can give business. Apart from 7th house, 11th house, 3rd house, all these things. Kubera is the planet for money. money. So any planet in Kubera, their focus will be money. The planet wants money. 
So, Mars is in Scorpio. Mars is in Kubera. Is Mars well placed in the chart? And when is Mars Dasha coming? Mars Dasha was over at a very young age. So, if you, for you to do business, young age was very good. <laughs> <laughs> but, suppose you have to make, let us say, let us say that, uh, bottom line is, I will not say that you will not have business, but the chances are very little. And even if you do business, you will be working hard in that business. It will be like service only. Okay. That is what it means. Six house being strong basically means lot of working hard. So such a person, even if he owns a business of his own, he will be working hard as though he is working for somebody else. So that is what it means. It doesn't necessarily mean he is not going to have a business at all. Now let us see if Sandhya has any chance of giving him a business at all. Can Sun give him business? Very, very unlikely. Sun is the 12th lord. He is with 6th lord Saturn, 2nd lord Venus. So, Atatrikonas are really dominating. Sun has very little role to play with respect to Kamatrikonas. So, I will not say that during 2002 to 2011, there is a chance of having his own business and doing well in his business. But what about Moon Dasha? Yeah. Anybody wants to make a prediction? First of all, once Moon Dasha comes in 2011, do you think that he will continue to do whatever he is doing at that point of time? Yeah. Or do you think there will be a change? There will be, a there will be some new beginning. That is almost for sure. You can say with 90% confidence that, that after 2011, July, or slightly before that, he will get into something new. That is one given. Secondly, what houses does Moon own? He owns the 11th house. What Aruha does he own? A7. A7. The fructification of desires, the manifestation of desires, the actual partnership, the actual business. So that is what Moon shows. And that Moon is placed in which, which Aruha. Moon is placed in some Aruha too. What Aruha is it? A3. Initiative. Third house is the house of initiative, communication. So this is the manifestation of that initiative. He always had initiative. And Jupiter gave him a lot of initiative. But that initiative was never manifested. It never manifested itself into a particular registration of a company or, or, or a particular starting of a business. So who is likely to give that? Moon, because he is associated with all the Kamatrikonas. He is in the Arudha of third house. He owns the Arudha of seventh house. He owns the eleventh house. And he is well placed in the chart. He is in Lagna. He is in a quadrant as well as trine. So, if at all this native, if at all he, he wants to have a business and if he comes to you for advice, your advice should be, man, take it easy for a while. This is not the right time. Even if you do something, you will burn your hands. So take it easy for a while. Don't do any business for now. Wait for some more years, seven more years. And then there is a very good chance that you will do business. So like 2006, sorry, 2010 time frame, if he starts planning, if he starts if he decides what kind of business he should do, then there is a good chance that he will succeed after 2011. And now what kind of business is Moon likely to give? He is in Hospitality. Oh boy. Hospitality. Yeah. Food. Moon can give hospitality, yes. restaurants, food, etc. Yes. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at, at that point of time in your life, Moon is in Anantamsa. <coughs> Moon is in Anantamsa. What kind of business does he show? No, no, that is no, Brahma. Brahma. Anta is rising, rising. Okay. So something relating to some spirituality. In some business, not religion, not the formal ritualistic religion, but spirituality. Find yourself, find your soul kind of business. That's what I was thinking. You are thinking of that? Yeah, you are now. I want to think my Very good, very good. I'm glad. Yeah, and then I want to make a lot of money and help people. That's what I want to do. Excellent. Yeah, that is exactly what is right for you. If you want, if you want business, basically dealing with people, kindness. You said hospitality. Moon does show hospitality and restaurants, but here because Moon is in Ananta Amsha, not in Varuna Amsha or Kudera Amsha, it is unlikely to be a food business. But it is some, some other kind of food, spiritual food basically. Taking, nourishing people, nurturing people, taking care of them, kindness basically, motherly affection to people, and then helping them rise spiritually. So that is the kind of other people to yes. expand their life. Yes, and he can make money do, doing that. Why waste money? Because A7, A3 and 11th house. And he can also help people. So if he was indeed thinking of that, that is exactly what his chart, chart also shows. 
So that means already, even though the Dasa has not started yet, the effect of the moon has already started. So once the Dasa comes, he will really do well and he will be well known for his work in the area of spirituality, studying spirituality. So that is that is the right time frame. So wait till 2011. Do your planning, but actual takeoff will be in my prediction is 2011. One quick question: Before that delay, again lose my job. That's not, I don't want. I don't okay, Sandasha. Sandasha. Overall, how is Sandasha for his job? In Sandasha, what are the under the side? You should be careful about. Over. Oh. In Sandasha, what is the under the side that you should be careful? Careful. Yeah. Who is likely to show? Who is possible to show a change in job? Yeah, that is the house of termination of salary. Two, seven. Seven. We said earlier, Saturn, we found, remember, you actually, you found Saturn. Yes. He was the seventh lord from Rahu. But from Sun, if you take the current Dasha Lord Sun as Lagna, who wants the seventh house from him? Mars. Mars. And the same planet from Lagna shows the eighth house of changes. Right? So usually Mars and the Dasha can give changes. But in Rahu Dasha, when Rahu Dasha was running earlier, Mars under the sign that Rahu Dasa happened to be a change which was for good, which was, which increased his fortune because Mars was placed in the ninth house from Rahu. Yeah. But in the case of Khan, he is placed in the seventh house. Right. So, so during Mars under the sign, does anybody think that there is some chance of either change in, uh, either change in career or termination of service or at least some tension of that? Yeah. It is possible, right? So, if we look at the physical chart, then we may be able to say it with more confidence. But just looking at this data, actually you just started it. The next one year is slightly dangerous. Relatively, it is a dangerous time, so you should be care careful during that time. So we will give him a mantra. The class will recommend him a mantra. But the, is this a prediction of class that next year is slightly dangerous for him? I think so, yeah. So everybody agree? So, so basically, during the next one year, you should be careful. And Mars. <coughs> what would that mean? Careful means. Basically, if there is any policy going on at company, yeah. because Mars is the planet of suddenness, yeah. there can be some stubbornness on your part also. Okay. Which can, if something happens, mm. that will also be a contributing factor. So try to be careful. Follow the procedures. Follow the procedures. Be uh, be good with everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't be argumentative. In mass under the staff, people tend to be argumentative with people. So try not to be argumentative with, with people. And even if you are not argumentative, there may be some other people who are argumentative. And try to try to not complicate things. Mm -hmm. Just take it easy. And deal it with diplomacy. Deal it with diplomacy. In mass under the staff, you need diplomacy. You definitely need diplomacy. Yes, now we will also give you a mantra. Just just wait for that. Yes, Vidam. No, Yeah. The Sthana, but it is the house of service. Oh, even six house from Sthana. Six house, still, house is the house of service. Yeah. And he is not a businessman, he is in service. So, Jupiter under the side is quite good. Don't worry about that. It is the Mars that is troublemaker. Mercury, how will Mercury under the side in Sandasha be? Who wants to venture a prediction? Mercury under the side in San Mahadatta. Good. Who says it will be good? Who says it will be very good? Who says it will be bad? First, very good. Good Sriram. Sriram is the only one who thinks it will be very good and I think he is right. It will be very good. Pardon me? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. 12 is not, 12 doesn't show losing job. 3rd and 8th show. Basically he is the ninth lord in the ninth house. From Lagna also, he is Lagna lord and 10th lord in the 10th house giving a Mahapush Yoga. So his intelligence being recognized, getting good guidance from people above him people above him being impressed with him and his intelligence being recognized, that is what you would expect in Mercury Antar Dasha. It's a very good Antar Dasha. And Jupiter is not great but it is good. Venus is okay. Not great but okay. Overall, if you see, there is no other dangerous Antar Dasha. The only dangerous Antar Dasha that I see ahead of him is wow. the next one year. If that one year basically passes by without any incident, then he's fine. And then you can, you can think about your business. You can plan your business. So now, we want to give him a mantra. If somebody has problems relating to career, first of all, there are 
There are two kinds of mantras that you can get. Look at, the first one is, look at Atmaka, Amartya Karaka. So is it Amartya Karaka? A-M-K. Amartya Karaka is? Moon. Moon is the Amartya Karaka. Oh, he had change of, he had Atmaka Karaka replacement. So we will see that in a later class. Amartya Karaka is Moon. Where is he in Navamsa? Look at Navamsa. In Navamsa, Moon is in Sagittarius. Where is he in Navamsa now? This is to see the God. There is a Devata called Parana Devata who basically controls your resources, the food that you get. That, that is what that particular god or goddess controls. So we want to find the deity known as Palana Devata. So for that, look at AMK, Amartya Karaka in Navamsa. From him or her, count the six house. So from, we, from moon, Amartya Karaka in Sagittarius in Navamsa, the six house is Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus. So we ended up in Taurus. So from Taurus you decide which god or goddess. And the rule is, if the, if, the, if the sign has a planet, take the planet. And if the sign is empty, take the Lord. Is Taurus empty here? No. No, there is Mercury. So the planet is Mercury. So the god or goddess to be propitiated should be based on? The planet. Mercury. And usually for Moksha you, you propitiate Vishnu, Vishnu Savtaras. For Palna, our resources, food and career, you propitiate Devi, Shakti, for food. So Palna Javata, usually you decide a form of the mother, divine mother. And then for, for giving blessings and recognition in your career, you propitiate Shiva. That is based on the I will do that a little later. But let us stick to Palna Javata right now. So Palna Javata is based on the mother's incarnation. So Mercury's incarnation corresponding to the mother. Sorry, mother's incarnation corresponding to Mercury. So what is it? Can anybody guess? See, for example, Saturn would be Mahakali, Venus would be Lakshmi, Moon would be Parvati or Lalita, Rahu would be Durga, or some people say Chinnamasta, Ketu would be Dhumavati. There are several forms of the mother, of the divine mother, of Shakti. Jupiter would be? For Jupiter. No, Jupiter would be Tara, Tara Devi, Tara. Tara. You can also say Saraswati. Basically, both are similar energy. And for Mars, it is either Chamundi or Bhaglamukhi or Anjana Devi. So there are different forms of the Divine Mother for each planet. And for for Sun, what is it? It can be Raj Rajeshwari. It can be Matangi. It can be Pingala. There are different forms of the Mother. So there are so many different shaktis. There are Dasamaha Vidya, 10 shaktis. There are 20 shaktis. There are so many different. There are 40 shaktis. There are different classifications of the, uh, of the energy of shakti. You can use any of them, but stick to a form of mercury. Can somebody tell me a form of the mother corresponding to mercury? There is a form of the mother holding a sugar cane. What is it? No. Tripurasandari. <coughs> Tripurasandari. If you can worship Tripurasandari, that will be very good for your career. That will basically make sure that there is no problem in getting food. There is no problem in your resources basically not cut off. So that is, that is what Tripur Sundari will take care of. Is there a special sloka for Tripur Sundari? Like, like, like there are several mantras. Oh, several mantras. Several mantras. I don't want to give a specific sloka. Whatever you are, whatever you feel related to. Okay. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Do mantras or slokas or kavachas, whatever you want to do. But pray to Tripur Sundari. Okay. So that is point number one. Point number two. Now, wherever he is working to, to be recognized for his abilities and to progress there, there is another, another God that is worshipped. That is based on Shiva. The Jyotirlingas, there are Dwadasi Jyotirlingas, right? So, so for if based on the fifth house in Dasamsa, we choose a particular Jyotirlinga and we worship that Jyotirlinga for success in career, for recognition at your workplace. That Shiva gives. Vishnu gives moksha, Shiva gives recognition and success, and Mother gives food, food to eat. So that is the classification. And here, the fifth house in Dasamsa is? Yeah. Capricorn. Who rules that house? Saturn. Saturn. So what you do is look at the fifth house and look at the fifth lord. And then take the Jyotirlinga corresponding to that planet. So that is the rule. 
and I will tell you for each planet, I will tell, I will tell you the Jyotilinga. For sun, it is Rameshwara. There is a there is a Jyotilinga in Rameshwaram. Where is it? It is at the Tamil Nadu. southern southern Tamil end of Nadu. India. Yeah. In Tamil Nadu, it is. So in Rameshwaram, there is a Jyotilinga. So people who for whom Rameshwara is the Jyotilinga corresponding to success and career, if they visit Rameshwaram, it is very good for them. Or even if you don't visit, you pray to Rameshwara. Mm -hmm. That will be good. And typically for all these, there, you can take the simple mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, and add that particular name. Mm -hmm. And you can use that name. For example, for people who have sun as the fifth lord, people have, who have Aries in the Kamsa as Lagna, for them sun will be the fifth lord and Rameshwara will be the lord. The mantra would be Om Namah Shivaya Namo Rameshwaraya. Mm -hmm. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Rameshwaraya. So that is for sun. If the fifth lord is moon, then the lord is, can you guess? Somanath. Where is Somanath? Gujarat. In Gujarat. So that is the god. So the mantra is Om Namah Shivaya Namah Somanathaya or Om Namah Shivaya Namah Someshwaraya, one of the two. And that is for? Moon being the fifth lord in the Samsa. Om Namah Shivaya Namah Somanathaya or Om Namah Shivaya Namah Someshwaraya. And then Mars. For Mars it is Bhimeshwara, Bhimashankara. So the mantra is Om Namah Shivaya Namo Bhimashankaraya or Namo Bhimeshwaraya. Depending on whichever letters are more appropriate for you, you can choose. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Bhimashankaraya. Is it Draksha Rama or the Bhimashankara? I'm not sure. I think it's Draksha Rama. But I'm not sure. I think Draksha Rama is the Jyotilinga, but I'm not 100% sure. Then for Mercury, who is the god? For Mercury. I also forgot. No, sir. Malikarjuna. Ah, Malikarjuna. Malikarjuna. Excellent. Thank you. Sijayala Malikarjuna. That is Mercury. So, Om Namah Shivaya Namo Malikarjuna. Some Telugu people make it Malikarjuna. Ka with an expression. Ka. That is not right. It is Malikarjuna. Say that as Malikarjuna. Malikha is not. It doesn't have any meaning. For me? H in, in the spelling is not right. This is Malikarjuna. Om Namah Shivaya Namah Malikarjuna. And then for Jupiter it is Kashi. Vishweshwara. Vishweshwara. Vishwanath. So Om Namah Shivaya Namah Vishweshwaraya. Or Om Namah Shivaya Namah Vishwanathaya. One of the two. So that is for Jupiter. For Venus, can anybody guess? Clue, it is a Nasik. Triambakeshwar. Yeah, Triambakeshwar. So, Om Namah Shivaya Namah Triyambakeshwaraya. Namah Triyambakeshwaraya. Om Namah Shivaya Namah Triyambakeshwaraya. That is for Venus. Triyambakeshwar is the form. It is in Nasi. And then for Saturn, it is in Ujjain. Mahakal. Kaleshwara. Yeah. So, Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Namas Kaleshwaraya. Om Namas Shivaya Namas Kaleshwaraya. Or Om Namas Shivaya Namo Mahakalaya. One of the two. And then for Rahu. What is the form for Rahu? Rahu. No, I think that's okay too. There is one with snake. Nageshwara. Nageshwara. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Nageshwaraya. That is for Rahu. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Rana. Namo Nageshwaraya. And for Ketu it is Om Namah Shivaya Namo Vaidyanathaya. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Vaidyanathaya. And if for, for some of you, fifth lord is Ketu, do this mantra but try to say Tha, not Dha. Many South Indians say Vaidyanathaya, Vaidyanath, but it's actually Nath. Vaidya Nathaya. Tha, not Dha. So these are the mantras. Now, I want somebody to volunteer. You. What is the mantra for him? Jupiter. Jupiter. Jupiter? No, no. Saturn. Jupiter is Ketu. Saturn? Yeah. And Kaleshwaraya. So what is the mantra? Om Namah Shivaya Namo Kaleshwaraya. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Kaleshwaraya. Perfect. So, if you do this mantra, especially when there is something going on at the company, you are suspicious. Yeah. Do this mantra 108 times in the morning. Every day? Yeah, if you do every day, 
or at least every Saturday, that would be good. Okay. To save my job, right? So, if you do this, then this is not saving your job. This is basically becoming important person in your workplace. So, that is what this mantra does. And saving job is Mother Sukhra Sandari. So, if you do this, the next one year of Mass Sandar Dasya, you will be able to fail through. And then, you don't, I don't think you have anything to worry about for a few years. And I think moon being in Lagna is actually a great blessing. Usually, sun or moon, they are the luminaries, they are the planets who have light in them. So, if that light is coming to Lagna, that is very auspicious. So, what the, what the show is somebody who will be well known. So, he will be a well known person in moon dasha. It's not come yet. When moon dasha comes? 2011 to 2020. Yeah. During those nine years, he will be quite successful. He will be famous. He will be well known for his work in spiritual areas, for his ventures, for his businesses in the spiritual area, you will be well known. So, we all wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you very much. God bless you. So, with that we will end for today. Next week, same time, same place. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti